Make sure you download the Woodward Sports app in the App Store and the Google Play Store today. Take Woodward Sports with you wherever you go and listen live on your phone or mobile device. Good morning, everybody. Welcome to the Morning Woodward Show here on the Woodward Sports Network. Your hosts, Adam Baydoun and Jeff Iafredi. Good morning, everybody. Jeff, how are you doing? I'm better this morning than I was watching that Monday Night Football. Why are the Denver Broncos? Just take them off. Just take them off. I know they don't have another Monday night or a primetime game until later in the year. Just just scratch it. I thought we agreed we were going to start with something like no, that. No, we got to we, we address the elephant in the room. What the right. hell was that last night? <laughs> that was... As a Melvin Gordon fantasy Oh, owner, trust me. We're going to get into that. Because Melvin Gordon... I've officially dropped him as of 7.58 this morning. Oh, wow. You got rid of him. I'm about to do the same. I mean, that's... Pathetic. Got three carries and they gave up on him. he sits there in the locker room after, oh, I thought I could have done more to help the team. I'm not sure what happened there. Nathaniel Hackett, it was the battle of really bad coaching. Yeah, it's, it's the clown Brandon show. Brandon Staley, I know you're 4-2, and two, and we'll go over our top 10 teams later on in the show. I'm not a fan right now. No. I'm not a fan. When you are playing a stingy defense and your offense isn't moving the ball up and down the field no like Keenan it typically Allen. does. You don't got Keenan. No Keenan Allen. Mike Williams being absolutely locked down Yeah. by Patrick Sertan the second. You take the points. Every and what does Brandon Staley do? Exactly what Dan Campbell would do. Ah! That's it! We don't need the points. There's. This is unbelievable to me. I feel like Brandon Staley is... is I'm not, I don't know exactly, but he's Dan Campbell with talent. That's that's what I'm, I if, feel like. That's, that's what Dan it, Campbell I'm, would be I'm doing. I'm done because they they look like a poorly coached team. Yeah. They, they make a lot of mistakes, lots of penalties. They're predictable on offense. I don't see it. I don't see it. I see a lot of talent. I don't see proper coaching. All right. I like you, Brandon Staley. I really do. But this is getting old. This is getting really old real quick. Get it together. Nathaniel Hackett, you suck. He should just... And honestly, you know what? I think Nathaniel Hackett gets a little bit of a bad rap because of how bad I think Russell Wilson is. Russell Wilson is so awful. Oh, my God. It's so bad. Pathetic. Did you see that stat? uh, Second half in overtime, he had like 15 yards or fourth quarter in overtime, whatever it was. 15 yards, dude. Did absolutely nothing. As if, like, he was going up against Patrick Sertan on his wide (laughs) receivers. God. No, it was that was embarrassing. Unbelievable. I couldn't. Even, the only reason I watched that game is because of fantasy implications. There was no other reason I was tuning into that game. Red Wings. Yeah, you know what? I'm not gonna lie to you. I won't lie to you. Worth the watch. I did not watch Monday Night Football for the first for majority of the first half. I'm I, with you. I was switch on and off. I was yeah, watching the Wings game. Me too. The Detroit Red Wings have become must-watch TV. Mm-hmm. Dylan Larkin. Let's just start there. Dylan Larkin with easily play of the season. Yeah, defensive play of the season. I mean, that was ridiculous. Yeah. Oh, we're going to go back. I'm sure they give out an award at the end of the year for the you know play of the year. That has to be up there. Or early, early nominee from now. To stop an empty netter. <laughs> and I'm not sure what the LA Kings player was thinking. I know, he was like 15 feet away from the net. He, he, he could have shot it from the blue yeah, line. he could have. And he was like, I'm just going to skate in here and take my time. Dylan Larkin, God bless him. I mean, that is the equivalent of the LeBron James block. Let's put it into perspective. Mm-hmm. Remember LeBron James's insane block against the Golden State Warriors, yeah, Andre Godala? Granted, this isn't a playoff atmosphere. Right. It was in the finals. But still, it is the equivalent chase down, mm-hmm. not cause a penalty, which would have gave them a penalty shootout if he had missed. But he stopped an empty netter from going in. And just like that is insane to me. Just like Iggy, everyone's waiting for the layup. They're waiting for the open. It's like, oh, game's over. Yeah, game's over. No, it's not. Larkin comes Bitch. in. Bitch. <laughs> Bitch. No, it's not. What a play. What, what a play. play. Soderblom, my God. The guy, he, he looks like a veteran. I mean, the guy, the way he skates, the way he, he handles the like puck. He looks like Zidane Ochara yeah. and Pavel Datsuk being the same girl. They're yeah. sperm fused. And sperm then they made fused. him. I swear to you. Yeah, he's. That, his little, you know, Oof. that that little play at, at center ice where he was tipping the tipping the puck. I mean, it was ridiculous. <laughs> and then all the free agency additions making plays. Perron, like Perron, these guys are just no, making an impact yep. right away. Right it's away. nice to see. Yeah, who so? And I would say the defense struggled more than he did. Right, Cider, his not his best effort, not his best day. That was that was a tough game. 
That was a tough game for Mo, but yeah. you'd expect the Wings to bounce back. A good, I can't believe I'm saying this, a good overtime loss because they should have lost that game. And that's the crazy part. Larkin's save gave them a point. And look, you know, maybe the point doesn't matter right now. It will matter down the stretch. It will. Especially for a team that you're looking at maybe get into the playoffs. Glad you brought it Those up. Those points matter. Three on three hockey in overtime, by the way, fascinating. Love, I'm, it's one of my favorite rule changes ever. Mm hmm. Totally opens it up. One defender, typically a center and a winger. I mean, your two best players usually on offense. Action packed, up and down it the is ice. Nothing but speed. Shots on goal, love it. Unfortunate way they lost though. That was yeah, it was that was kind of like way. the letdown because if you were gonna lose, you know, on a snipe or a one timer or something like, all right, man, they got it. Felt like off, you're Mort. on this high going man. into OT and then just boom. It was just, just like it's okay. We, like we you said though, a, the best case scenario. on a deflection. On a deflection. Imagine too. like being in that locker room and thinking, man. We really lost like that? Imagine being at the stadium. Man, we really lost like that? It's even the first I, I, I couldn't believe it. It was a big letdown for the Red Wings. Even the first goal they gave up, it was off Mo Sider's leg. Yep, yep. Like, it was just, you know, and Husso went to, to, to catch the, the, the puck with his left hand and went to his right. I mean, just, it is what it is. Like you said, overtime loss, so I think it'll buoy them well going forward. But the Wings, man. The Wings are the only thing worth watching. Until the Pistons start, we'll see. But every time I tune into the Red Wings so far through three games, it's... I'm on the edge of my seat, and it's entertaining. Thank goodness we got something. Thank Red goodness. Look good. They look nice. Uh, Larkin, again, that, that embodies what a captain looks like. Mm -hmm. 10 out of 10 performance. Uh, I'm, I can't believe it. Can't believe it. You, are, you have to be honest here and say you actually are looking forward to every game this year. Yeah. It's an 82-game season. You're probably going to catch every single one of them. They're must-watch. They're young. They're hungry. They skate well. The defense last night, not its best effort, but still, that was refreshing to see. Well done. Well done to Steve Eiserman. Well done to Derek Lalon. I mean, I love it, Jeff. I love it. We got Sean Murphy joining the show, 815 Detroit yeah. Pistons basketball. Levi O, we'll get to him at 830. That's unfortunate. We'll give away our top 10 teams. Which you'll be surprised. I got some. It was weird this week. A lot of upsets this weekend. I'm excited to what see your list. What if I told you four of your teams didn't make my list? Oh, I can't wait to see your list. I cannot wait. Yeah. <laughs> Top of the hour, the Detroit Lions have never. Detroit Lions have never won more than six games after starting a season one and four. The phone lines will be open today, 313-552-6322. We'll take callers for the top of the hour segment. 915 college football playoff rankings. I'll release the first bracket. I want your thoughts on it. Who's in, who's out, who's just missing? Our Michigan legit national contenders will take callers at 930 as well. And then, of course, we have to talk about our fantasy football misery. Well, for you, I guess it's a good thing. Oh, I snuck out of there with... So we're both 5-1 in the Woodward Sports League, but yeah. we'll, get, we'll get to that we'll later. Get to that. So let's take a quick pause. When we get back, Sean Murphy will be joining us to talk about the Detroit Pistons as they open up tomorrow night against the Orlando Magic. It's going to be a fun season. Cade Cunningham, a lot of people are concerned with his preseason performance. I, for one, am not. I think it's a bit ridiculous, but hey, Jeff, what do I know, right? It's not like if I had a vote. I would have voted for Derek, you know, Evan Mobley or Scotty Barnes. Or, you know, they were all way better than Kate last year. <laughs> right. right? So, By far. What do I know? <laughs> Anyways, we'll be right back. But before we go, Jeff, our good friends over at Big Boy. Yes, for a limited time only. All new burgers and loaded fries are, are at Big Boy. It's not just a Slim Jim. It's the Big Jim. They have the chili cheese burger as well as the bacon blue. So how, how about upgrading those fries, by the way? They have the chili cheese fries, baked potato fries, or the nacho fries. Satisfy those taste buds at Big Boy. Fellas, let's be honest. We like things to be easy. We like simple stuff, like sports seven days a week. We like things uncomplicated, like Lady Jane's haircuts for men. Open 10 to 8, seven days a week. Walk in anytime. Sign in, sit down, watch your favorite team play. And before you know it, your hair will be game ready. Open 10 to 8, seven days a week. Walk in anytime. Lady Jane's haircuts for men. It's wicked awesome. Three NBA 
championships. Detroit fans were there. 11 Stanley Cups. Detroit fans were there. Four World Series wins. Detroit fans were there. And uh, that one Lions playoff win in 1991. Yeah, Detroit fans were there. Woodward Sports, where the fans are. Chili Pepper Sanding is where you'll find all the cleanest salons in the D with spotless sanitized rooms and trained and certified tanning professionals. Join the Pepper Club for all the best deals. They'll be all competitors by $5. ChiliPeppersTanning.com. Hottest bulbs, hottest deals, darkest tans. Your vitamin D headquarters, 27 locations, and more on the way. Chili Peppers Tan! There's one person we need to get a monthly subscription to Chili Peppers is Fish. <laughs> Look at him. I'm I'm white as hell. I I know that though. I'm not shocked. Fish, I can I can get you looking like a Guido. I can get Fish, you all tanned off the up. top of your head. How many days till the World Cup? Uh, well, it's one month on uh, the twentieth, so that's Thursday. I know when it starts. So it's thirty-two days then. So you're excited? Oh hell yeah, I'm excited. It's gonna be fun. What's the What's the time schedule like? Uh, so it's like five, eight. 11 and 2? At night? No, p.m. <laughs> you obviously don't know where the Middle East is. You visited there, Ding Dong. You should know that. I'm asking you. Oh, yeah. A.m. A.m. and then the 2 p.m. USA's all 2 p.m., though. We're on the same page. Yes. Can By I the place? way, not that you care, Kareem Benzema won the Ballon d'Or yesterday. Yeah, it's a fake award. Oh, okay. Lost all respect for the award five years ago, so... <laughs> what happened five years ago? You know what happened. Do I? Yep. Hell, 12 years ago. Go go find the winner in 2010. Wasn't it Ronaldo? Nope. Oh. Messi? Mm-mm. What do we know? Just shut up. They wanted... <laughs> do your research. The I did. 2010, I, <laughs> I lost all respect for that award. Anyways, we have Sean Murphy on the morning show. <laughs> Sean, good morning, buddy. How you doing? Adam, Jeff, it's so good to see you guys. 24 hours from now, I'm going to be wreaking havoc in the studio. It's going to be so good. Oh. Adam, Adam, which cheek on your face should I kiss tomorrow when I see you? I like you. <laughs> you have 24 hours to decide. None. Neither. <laughs> None of the above. Fit. Neither. Please, God, no. <laughs> I didn't sign up for this. Well, it's, yes, you did. You let me work here. You signed up for it. <laughs> God. All right. Well, look, Let's Sean, roll. I want to get started. They open up against Orlando, Paulo Bencaro, Jade and Ivy on display. Temper my expectations for Jade and Ivy a little bit. Yeah, Jade and Ivy... Listen, he's a guy that has shown flashes in the preseason of being a star on both ends of the court. He's 20 years old. He's going to make mistakes. He, 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 his averages, his numbers in preseason, there were only four games. He was 12 and a half points, 35% from the field. He's going to have some time to, you know, he's going to need some time to make some mistakes, learn how to play in the flow of the offense. But I think he's going to be good early. I think the big thing is that, you know, one thing that's going to help him a ton, one thing you're going to notice right away is that NBA spacing was made for him. I mean, the ability to operate in the open court, the ability to accelerate and get to the basket, create, create opportunities for other players. He's going to make offense easier for a lot of players, and we haven't seen that type of game-breaking athleticism in a Pistons uniform in years. So I think he's going to come out and be really solid day one. He's also going to make mistakes day one, and I think that's the thing that Pistons fans – just have to brace for is that at the beginning of the season there might be some of those nights where he struggles with efficiency there might be some of those nights where he's struggling shooting from the floor and that's just because he's just learning how to score at this at this at this stage and at this point in the league i think he's going to be a really good player it's just it's going to take a few games with the loss of marvin bagley i thank god by the way we talked about this last night thank god it wasn't something serious he's only gonna be out a couple of weeks uh, explain to me adam and the people what does this injury mean for a guy like jalen duran how does his role change now without a guy like marvin bagley being in the lineup because we kind of envisioned you know you'd, you'd see duran kind of get brought around uh, brought along slowly maybe he earned significant playing time towards the end of the year what does this mean for duran right now I think Duran was still going to get some playing time at the beginning of the season. He's definitely going to get playing time now, especially, you know, with Marvin Bagley. One of his roles, one of the things that he was on this team for was being able to get easy offense 
you know, for the Pistons above the rim. I think that's something that Jalen Duran can certainly get tested in, you know, in the pick and roll at the beginning of this year. I think the other thing as well, I think you're going to be seeing the importance of that Isaiah Stewart, you know, uh, Jalen Duran pairing that, you know, the Pistons are putting a lot of stock into. I think we're going to see that get tested early. And so I think that's a big impact of this Marvin Bagley injury is the fact that we're going to be seeing this pairing with Stewart and Duran almost day one out of necessity. I mean, the Pistons, you know, decide, you know, to start Bojan Bogdanovic and Isaiah Stewart, they're going to be starting with a size disadvantage, right? So, you know, with Jalen Duran coming in, you know, setting the tone physically, you know, physically on the defensive end, being able to crash the glass, that's going to be the thing that he's going to have an impact on day one. And, I mean, from what we've seen, the kid can be very good, and he seems NBA-ready in a lot of ways. The big thing for him is going to be, you know, discipline with foul trouble because, he, you know, in his last preseason game, he got four fouls in the first quarter in the first, like, in the first 10 minutes, right? Like, that's just something that is going to happen with this kid. He's going to be able to rack up fouls very easily. But if he learns to stay on the court, he's going to be very good very quickly. One thing that's going to be very important uh, this season is the chemistry between Jay Nivey and Kate Cunningham. And, and per James Edwards, he's been reporting as well. Those guys spent every minute together. Like it's it's gotten to the point where Jaden doesn't leave the court until Cade leaves the court. I want to ask you, Sean, as someone who also covers his team, what is what are you expecting out of these two? And how do you see the pairing or how long? What do you think the ups and downs are going to be for these two to be able to work together? Because I think people kind of underestimate that part of it rather than, hey, they're just going to fit seamlessly. Like, no, there's a, I think that we can all acknowledge there's going to be a growing, uh, some growing pains at least through the first 15, 20 games for these two players. But what are your expectations for this backcourt at such a young age for both of these guys? Yeah, for sure. You brought it up. You know, uh, a lot of reporting out there, you know, by James Edwards III, Omar Sankofa, a lot of, you know, beat, writer, beat writers chronicling, you know, their relationship and how much they want to make it work. Maureen Fader, the ringer, did a really good piece chronicling Detroit's upcoming uh, rebuild and talked about their relationship specifically. So that's a good piece right there. Um, I would say the big thing for Ivy and Cade is, you know, obviously, you know, I think they're going to have to learn how to play with each other on the offensive end. That's going to be the big thing is, you know, is running the offense. Who's going to have the ball in their hands? I think with Jaden Ivy in particular, he's just going to have to learn to play more without the ball in his hands at this point or, at, you know, at this stage of the game. I think one big thing with Cade, you know, we saw him, people questioned his aggressiveness during the preseason. I think you're going to see you know, during the regular season, a more a more aggressive Cade Cunningham. And so I think with, with Ivy, he's going to have to learn how to, you know, play with less shot attempts. And also, you know, it's, you know, these guys are both not even 21 years old yet, right? So, like, there's still um, a lot of growing pains and things that they're going to have to learn. But, I mean, for what we've seen from the physicality standpoint, they're both insanely gifted playmakers. So from that standpoint, the Pistons are, you know, are going to be blessed you know, from that standpoint, but then also you have two guys that can break the game in their own way. With Cade, he's such a special player mentally. He can score from any point on the court, get any type of offense that he wants. And then with Jaden Ivey, his ability to get to the basket, his ability to create contact, draw fouls, I think is something that's going to have a huge impact. And then the the upside of these guys defensively, I mean, good Lord, Cade Cunningham 6'6", Jaden Ivey 6'4", edging on 6'5", their ability to, if they could be great, you know, defensively, that's going to be something that in the long term is going to pay dividends. So I think overall, I mean, the Pistons, when they've been great, it's been it's been largely with all-star backcourts. We very much could be seeing Detroit's iteration of their next all-star backcourt right in front of our eyes. And now kind of going back to that with Marvin Bagley, too, obviously out for a couple weeks. What is and we can talk about what you think the starting lineup will be. What is your starting lineup you'd roll with for opening night against the Orlando Magic? And then maybe you can give me what you think will be the starting lineup or maybe they their core exists. So they're the exact same thing. What's your projected yeah, starting I, lineup? Yeah, I think the likelihood, Jeff, is I think you're going to roll day one uh, with the veteran. I think, you know, the, the current starting lineup. You're going to see Cade and Ivy in there pretty much the entire year. Sadiq Bay, his spot in the in the spar, in the starting lineup right now is pretty much untouchable. It's that four spot that's the real question, right? I think for uh, I think for the sake of the offense and the flow of the offense, I think the Pistons are going to start with Bojan Bogdanovic and Isaiah Stewart, even though they do give up a little bit of size. That is something that they're going to have to 
you know, address. And I think, you know, it'll be interesting to see in particular how that's tested against the magic with, you know, Paulo Boncaro, Wendell Carter Jr., you know, this, the bigs that, they, you know, Bo Bamba, just name a few of the bigs that they have. I think it's going to be interesting to see how the Pistons have to deal with that physicality. However, I just think at the beginning of the season, you know, a lot of people I know they want to see Jalen Duran start, but the Pistons aren't going to start him until he's ready to start. So, you know, bringing him along throughout the season, seeing the signs that he's ready to be a part of that lineup. I think for now, having Isaiah Stewart as the, at the five, someone who's a stable presence, can play either position in the front court, but also Bojan Bogdanovic, steady 18 points a game. You know, the guy that that's just a, a bucket. I think, you know, for him, you know, he's going to be that most stable force we can have at that four spot day one. Well, Sean, let me ask you this. Pistons right now are projected to finish 13th in the Eastern Conference. Let's look at the young backcourts around the East, right? You have Cleveland. You have Atlanta. Mm-hmm. Toronto to an extent, and not necessarily. Milwaukee's the juggernaut. Boston Young and they're a juggernaut. Brooklyn, you'd expect them to compete for the next few years, depending on KD. What is the what is the realistic timeline for this backcourt to develop to a point where you're not talking about a 30, 31 win team. You're talking about a 38, 39, 40, 42 win team where they're not contenders, but they're probably going to be a 6, 7, or 8 seed. Yeah, it's not far off, Adam. I mean, the Pistons going into this upcoming offseason, let me make sure I say this as loud as possible so that people know what I'm talking about. $80 million in cap space. Just so people know what the what the end of the road is here. $80 million in cap space for the Pistons coming up the, at the end of this season. The opportunity to be in the draft lottery with the likes of Victor Wembanyama and Scoot Henderson. And then also the fact that you're going to be getting year three Cade Cunningham next year, year two Jade Nivey with alongside with whoever the Pistons bring in. I think the Pistons can start to be a lot more competitive next season. I don't think it's particularly unrealistic to say, you know, at least 30 plus next year as far as win total. And in two years, I think, you know, you can be looking at a very competitive Pistons in the Eastern Conference. I think, you know, the, they're on the cusp of, of taking a jump. You know, the, the Cleveland Cavaliers last year, no one expected them to be a playoff team. They expected maybe a play-in team. So for them to, you know, take the jump, take the lead, be more what they expected, I think that's the goal for the Pistons this year. See if they can seed expectations, take that next step, show that that identity is being formed. I mean, make no mistake about it. Even though this team is the most talented it's been, the average age of this team is still 24.8 years old, up from 23.3 years old last year. So this team is still really young. They're still going to make mistakes. They're still going to have nights where, you know, they look they look lost on certain ends of the court. But at the end of the day, they're going to get more competitive. They're going to be they're much more talented than they were. And going into next year, going into the next couple of years, we're definitely going to be in a form where we can contend more in the Eastern Conference. So they're on the cusp of doing some really good things. I really think it's not too far off, Adam. I think a guy, <clears throat> excuse me, I think a guy like Sadiq Bay too, Sean. Also, people are excited for Jay Nivey, of course, and Cade Cunningham, but people forget. You know, Sadiq might be second in that pecking order this year until you see Jay Nivey, you know, kind of grow into his own and, and become that rookie we all expect or that player. What are your expectations for Sadiq Bay this year? And where do you think he'll kind of be on that pecking order between him, Kay, Jaden, and, and the rest of the guys? What are your expectations for Sadiq this year? I think with Sadiq, it's all about consistency, right? Yep. I mean, we've seen, you know, the flashes that Sadiq can be an incredible score. We've seen that Sadiq can put up 51 points in a game when all things are going off. We've also seen that Sadiq Bey can have a night where he's like one of 12 from the field and on the box score you can go what in the Sam hell happened? Right? So I think for Sadiq the entire thing this year is how do you create your own offense but also how do you do it in a way that's efficient? How do you make quick snap decisions when creating your own offense? Because I think we saw Sadiq try to initiate more of his own offense this past year out of necessity because in, in you know in his first you know in his first season you know he was able to get so many good looks from beyond the arc his second season he was much more of a factor he was in team scouting reports he had to learn how to adjust and play the game differently so he could still be a factor but i think the thing you know for Sadiq is you know if he if he wants to be like you know the second or even third option on this team going forward he's gonna have to show that he can do it on a, on a consistent basis 
There's a lot of guys who can go out and get 20 points even once or twice a week. It's about it's about the guys that can do it on a on a consistent basis in this league. And so, you know, whether that's, you know, being able to do it with the physicality, whether that's being able to adjust speed with being able to drive the ball, drive the ball into the basket, whatever it is, Sadiq's just going to be able to have to show that next level of consistency. But if there's anyone that can do it, if there's any player that we know that's put in the work, it's him. So I'm, I'm expecting to have a solid year out of Sadiq this year. And I think it's just that next step of being consistent and also having that leading presence role on this team. Fair enough. Well, Sean, Ken, thank you enough for joining us this morning. Appreciate it as always. Uh, we'll see you tomorrow. I'm not looking forward to it, but I know Jeff is. <laughs> We're going to have some fun. Catch you guys tomorrow, man. Take I'm care, really buddy. Looking forward to it. Take care. See you, Sean. Go Pistons! Uh, Fish, shut the hell up. <laughs> when we get back, <laughs> when we get back, Levi Onzerike ruled out for the season. Nice. Second round picks continue oh. to haunt the Detroit Lions. We'll discuss that and so much more coming up. But before we go, Jeff, our good friends over at Odds Trader. Well, if you bet on that game last night, I'm sorry. But it's not over. You got Pistons tomorrow. You got Red Wings going on currently. It's not just football, guys. You can bet on multiple different things now. And Odds Trader can be your source for that. OddsTrader.com is the number one site for your game day bets, play by play updates, live scores, and the best price on every game from multiple sports books. It's convenient. You go to Odds Trader, everything's lined up in front of you. And I'm a guy who likes convenient things. So if you want to be if you want to be convenient, head over to OddsTrader.com and find out your best bet. Life is full of hard choices. We're here to make one of life's biggest decisions as simple as possible. My name is Christina Gennari, and for over 20 years, I've helped hundreds of families buy and sell homes. We cover all of Metro Detroit and more, from large luxury homes to starter homes. We will work hard to make sure that you get the home of your dreams. So if you're in the market today or even thinking about buying or selling in the future, make the obvious choice. Christina Gennari, the obvious choice in real estate. Visit us at soldchristina.com today. We don't like to brag that we are the toughest sports network in Detroit. But we do have a guy named Darren McCarty on our side. Lemieux and McCarty, who had a good knockdown drag up. There they go, right on the wall. Being able to one another. Woodward Sports. Win front row tickets to see the Detroit versus Green Bay game. Yes, front row tickets to enter make sure you record a video of you doing your best dan campbell impression man man post it on instagram or twitter with hashtag woodward sports or excuse me woodward front row hashtag woodward front row man make sure you're following woodward sports man and we will select three winners and they will give you two tickets each to see what each guys what are we doing right better copy here when the winner will be announced jesus christ on november 4th man you you, you want to blame the me who wrote this a five-year-old you, you want to blame me dan campbell might have wrote it <laughs> what i mean you can blame me everyone blames show. me so i'm fine if you don't fish, blame I don't, me fish i don't blame you only on only on uh tuesdays why? What's wrong with Tuesdays? I don't know. Oh. <laughs> NBA starts tonight, by the way. Speaking of yes. uh, fun events starting tonight. Fish, didn't I tell you shut the hell up? It's not a good day. It's Tuesday. I lost in my big money leap. <laughs> what? Oh, so it's your fault. <laughs> it's not mine. <laughs> I blame you. I lost in fantasy, too, because I stupidly put Dalton Schultz in. I should have left those space open with the bye. <laughs> Would have been That's better a off. Uh, Almost fleeced the system. Life read needs to like go back to school. Okay. Anyways, well, you know who your wrote, just, you know who wrote the library. You know who wrote the library. Just mute it. Just mute it. Please do everybody. I'm telling you who wrote the library. Just mute your mic. Okay, I'll, mm. It's right, still Jeff. open, by the way. All right, Jeff. Levi off for the season. Did have back surgery during the bye week. Second round picks continue to fail for the Detroit Lions. Brad Holmes so far 0 for 1. Yet to be determined on Josh Pascal, but we're entering this. <laughs> you're entering this uncomfortable situation where you miss two years in a row on a second round pick. That's not good. No, it's not. And I've given you Buffalo. I've given you Kansas City. Bring up the Chargers. I've given you the Chargers. Yeah. Hell, even the Broncos. Yeah, Broncos. You want talent? 
you got to nail those first and second rounders. Do you like getting an Amon Ross St. Brown in the fourth round? Sure. Really nice. Do you like getting a Malcolm Rodriguez who is just okay, if we're all honest here? Sure, okay. We'll take some players here and there. But the reality is, round one and two, you got to hit big time. Brad Holmes, he's hit on Panay. And that's it in the first two rounds. Hutchinson to be determined. You haven't seen Pascal or Jameson Williams play yet. No, excuse me, play yet. Jeff, time to be concerned? Um, yeah, I'm actually going to say yeah uh, for, at this point because it doesn't help that historically the Lions have not been good at second-round picks. Like, I went back and looked. The, if you want to bring up the last eight years, you could maybe make the argument they've only had one good second-round selection, and that would be DeAndre Swift. And he hasn't been the most healthiest, but really that's the only player the past eight years. Levi obviously missing the entire season. Then even go back further, 2019 was Jelani Tavai. 2018 was Carrion, uh, Carrion Johnson. 2017 was Tease Tabor. Like you're, you're getting to the point where it's, it's getting uglier and uglier. <laughs> what, what is going on right now? Is, guy, is this guy cracked out? Who, who is this dude outside? Do you know him? Do you know that guy? Do you know that guy? He wasn't even in the shot. He was to the side of the shot. This guy oh just went up against god. the glass and showed his chest. Oh my god. Wait. I've seen everything now. Do you know that guy? Oh, he's I've walking seen in. It all. Do you of course know I know that guy. Who oh my hell? goodness. Continue, continue, Jeff. You're good. No, 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 no. I can't just continue. <laughs> What's up, Joe? Who's in the glass? How are you, buddy? <laughs> oh my goodness. Walk up up here. What's up, buddy? What? I'm always good. I'm always good. Like, How's it going? I was like, wait, I just stopped my thought. I'm like, oh what my god. I'm like, you know that him? That was hilarious. That is funny. <laughs> What's up, dude? <laughs> Hell yeah, enjoy. Enjoy. Let's catch up soon, okay? Uh, he should be in like within the hour. Appreciate it, Joe. See you guys. See right, you, take man. care. Oh my no, no god, that was, uh, that was awesome. Jeff, Jeff is, Adam. he's lost for Dude, words. What? I, Jeff is lost for words. I can't Speechless. control people from literally walking in here. <laughs> Who is that? <laughs> oh, God, that's the owner of uh, the carpet guys. Yeah, I was going to say, I, I, I had a feeling oh, that was him. Okay, so that's yeah, what yeah. I, I was, uh, yeah, Joe, you knew him. Uh, oh, my God. Jeff was stunned. Well, I just see a guy open up his, his shirt, that showing was... his chest against the glass behind him. Yeah, I have no idea. All right. Okay. Anyways. Back to, back back to what to I was saying. Uh, doing a show. Yes. Sorry, guys. Back to regular scheduled programming. <sighs> it's important. you you got to be able <laughs> to hit on these second round picks. Like you said, you look around the league, a lot of teams even have impactful players playing for them that they drafted in the second round. The Lions right now, we talk about the lack of, of depth everywhere, especially on defense, a lack of talent. doesn't help you missed on the last two picks. And it's crazy, too, and I'm not trying to play devil's advocate. I'm not trying to say that Josh Pascal shouldn't be the pick because I've yet to see him play. But it's, it's even more frustrating that Brad knew about these injuries before he drafted them. And, and now seeing how it's played out, it doesn't really help his case. Like if you look at Josh Pascal taking 46th overall, look at the guys that were after him. Jaquan Brisker, Sam Williams, Christian Harris. Like these are players that are positions of need and would be able to make an impact right away. So for me, it is concerning. I don't think I'm going to say, you know, you shouldn't have taken Josh Pascal yet. I have to see him play. But for, for Brad Holmes, if you want to talk about Brad, you got to be able to draft, especially hit on guys that can contribute right away and not be hurt in college or for Levi's sake, having that lingering back issue, you draft him, and now he's going to miss the entire season. It may even, this may even end his career. So, again, we can praise Brad. I still think he's probably, if not the best, one of the best general managers. I think it's only been two years, but I think when it's all said and done, he'll be the best general manager ever for the Lions. But a part of that is hitting on those second-round picks because he's good, done a good job past that. The fourth round, you find Malcolm in the sixth, but you got to hit on the second. There's still plenty of talented players available. In the last two drafts, he has yet to find I one. will say this about Brad Holmes that I don't like. I don't like this continuous habit of drafting injured players you don't have that right no you don't have that yeah there is no front office in the nfl that has that cachet outside of maybe a handful let's say that are legitimate contenders that could take a swing oh we could afford 
to miss on a first round pick. You could afford to miss on a second round pick. No, you can't. When you are rebuilding, you cannot afford it. And the reality is, for everybody's sake, what I will say is, Josh Pascal needs to work out. Needs to. Because if he doesn't, I'm going to look at Brad Holmes and say, you've had two drafts. I am missing two potential starters because you've decided to draft players who are injured. That's not a fun conversation to have, but that's the reality. You want to get into an uncomfortable conversation? Levi doesn't play well this year. Levi gets hurt again and doesn't play the rest of the season. You want to have a really honest conversation about the Lions' current situation? Not only does the coaching suck, you're now looking at the GM and saying, you've had two NFL draft classes. You couldn't pull one second-round pick. Not a good look. You were able to pull Sewell, able to pull St. Brown, able to pull a few starters here and there. Right. Good players. I have to give credit where credit's due. But, but I am to be determined on Pascal and Jameson Williams, even though we all agree j was the best wide receiver coming out of the draft prior to that injury. Fair? Fair. Cool. You did draft Aiden Hutchinson. These players need to start performing as much as anything for his sake. Yeah, yeah. Look, again, Brad Holmes earned all the praise that he had going into this year. And after that draft, why, Jeff? Amon Ross St. Brown, Penesul, that's why. Mm-hmm. If he's going into this offseason and you're questioning his number two overall pick, unsure of the number 12 overall pick, and then looking at the second rounder and he's injured again, boy, you're not going to have as much of an optimistic, positive offseason as you'd like because that's not a good look. No. I can't even defend that. You know what's even more surprising, too? Like, he worked, he was a part of the Los Angeles Rams, and what did the Los Angeles Rams do so well the last couple of years? They didn't have first-round picks. They were hitting on guys in the second round. We'll take away Cam Akers because that doesn't seem like a hit. But for the most part, they were able to find guys, contributors, that can play right away in the second round. So you're right. I, I don't know in what, you know, uh, what mindset he had to be able to say, you know what, we're going to take two guys that – have injury history, but I think they have tremendous upside. You don't have that right. The Lions right now, you need starters. You need guys that can contribute right away. And especially when you see who fell after Josh Pascal, or even going back to Levi, who was still there after Levi, it's it's inexcusable. Yes, it's only been two drafts, but Josh Pascal's got to work out. That's got to be a contributor, because if it isn't, and you miss on your first two drafts in the second round, doesn't help you going forward because you're not always going to find an Amon Ra in the fourth. You're not always going to find a Malcolm Rodriguez in the sixth. Yeah, but that, that be able to equity hit the has to count for something, though, and that's why I've been very supportive of Brad Holmes, though. Right? Yeah, no, I'm not going to take that and away from him. I know you've him. been the yeah. same way. It's just the reality. When you pull four or five starters and two draft classes, to me, you're doing a good job. Right. Now, you, you would like it to be. Am in the I second. nitpicking here yeah. and saying, well, your second round picks haven't panned out? Yeah, yeah, a little bit. But I haven't seen Pascal play yet, so I don't want to even enter- entertain that yet. Mm-hmm. When Pascal sees the field, if he gets hurt somehow, some way, hopefully not, eh, there's going to be a conversation. But if he goes out and plays and he's giving you quality snaps. He's a starter. He's solid. You've put, now pulled six starters, right? which could be seven when J-Mo comes back. I'm not seeing... The issue with the GM here. Again, concerning that the second round picks aren't working out. Yes, because you can date back the last two seasons, three seasons, three seasons, excuse me, players that were taken in the second round. You have players like an Asante Samuel Jr., right? You can find talent. Second round, I mean, these are borderline first round picks in the second round, especially when you're picking early. So there's talent there. I, I believe the conversation this morning about Levi O being out is you would hope the same isn't the case for Josh Pascal. Mm-hmm. You would hope that he gives you quality snaps. And if he does, again, I'm looking at my GM. He's giving me four, five, I could even say six starters in two drafts. What more could you ask for? 
Now the cap is going to open up a little bit. He'll go spend out in free agency in the summer as well. And I believe everybody would be on the same page here. But the problem in Detroit right now is your football team is 1-4. and four. Your football team is 1-4. and four. And excuse my runny nose. It won't stop. I apologize. I'm not feeling great. Having said that, you're 1-4. and four. That's the problem. You're 1-4 and four because of coaching decisions. That's the problem. Right. Not because Pascal's not on the field or Jamison Williams. Or da, 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 it doesn't da, da. help that those guys are on the field. It doesn't help, but, but it's you're right. not the singular reason. I don't think those guys are the reason why he goes for it on 4th and 9. And so, I mean, it's it's probably a different conversation. Look, uh, Funky says, second and third rounders, Aleem is solid, but if he and Joseph are a huge question mark, I would still give Kirby Joseph the benefit of the doubt as of now. I haven't seen... Anything alarming on tape? I haven't seen anything alarming in his character so far. I would say growing pains. Right, like the first game against Seattle. Not not the end of the world, but bounce back a little bit. Not the end of the world. I would, I would agree on the iffy statement though. Oh man, what if Pascal sucks? Question from Eric Menina in the Woodward Sports Chat. I mean, that's again. Like, if we want to go, let's just bring up the Chargers for example. I mean, they took Asante Samuel until 2021. He's a, a starting corner. Uh, the year before that, they took Kenneth Murray, a linebacker who's nothing special, but still a, a contributor. Like, this is why it's a problem. Uh, because if people want to complain about the defense, second-round picks or uh, the last two, three drafts are defensive players, two drafts. Those guys are supposed to be helping you and contributing right now to the struggling defense, and they're not here. So that's why this conversation is being brought up. But you're right. I think there's other issues to look at. And for Brad Holmes' sake, I think a part of, uh, you know, part of being a GM isn't always about the draft. It's about spending money in free agency, and he hasn't really had an opportunity to do that until next offseason. So, again, it's not like this means Brad sucks, but you got to be able to find guys in the second round that can come in and contribute right away and have no question marks about injuries. Because I do, I did like the Josh Pascal pick, but I was concerned about those injuries, especially coming out and now having the hernia doesn't help. But if he could still find guys value in later in the rounds, it's it's kind of keeping him still in this. Like you said, two to three starters a draft, and he's well, doing look, that. Well, look, top of the hour, we're going to start taking callers. 313-552-6322. Alex, please go ahead and pin it at the top of the Woodward Sports chat. At 8.45, coming up in a few minutes, we're going to release our Week 7 Power Rankings. Top of the hour, we're going to take callers. You, the people, we want to talk about the Detroit Lions with all of you. 9.15, we'll release the college football latest rankings. We'll give our top four. See who's in, who's out, who's barely missing the cut. We'll talk Michigan football later on, 9.30. Are they legitimate national contenders? We'll take callers on that as well. That and so much more. But before we go, i got to tell you about our good friends over at Planet Fitness. We will be broadcasting live from Planet Fitness Excuse me, on Ryan Road in Sterling Heights on Wednesday, October 26th. You'll be eligible to win prizes like Michigan, Michigan State tickets with a one-year free black card membership, a signed Darren McCarty, and a signed Braylon Edwards jersey. So... Get started today. Planet Fitness is home of the judgment-free zone where you can work out in a non-intimidating, judgment-free atmosphere. Check them out at in excuse me. Check them out in the facility or at planetfitness.com. At work and at home. We're there with smarter security solutions. Featuring complete automation with customized alerts and more. For over 90 years, we've been the company that's been counted on to protect what matters most, all with personalized service and care. Right now, for a limited time, receive a free video device plus free installation with a new home system. Guardian Alarm. We protect Michigan. When you need apparel, there's only one place to go. Big Frog in Novi. With no setup fees, no artwork fees, no minimum, and a 24-hour turnaround, you can have your whole team outfitted in no time. Embroidery, direct-to-garment, vinyl, and screen printing, Big Frog has it all in all the styles you want. So whether it's a sports team, fundraiser, school event, or corporate needs, Big Frog is your one-stop destination. Visit bigfrog.com slash novi or call 844-4-BIGFROG. 
Woodward Avenue, the first paved road in America. Woodward Sports, the first sports network born in Detroit and made for Detroit. At Alta, Uptime Matters. Alta Equipment has everything you need to get the job done. You have a big project coming up. Well, Alta Rent has you covered. Call them today, 844-GO-TO-ALTA. That's 844-GO-TO-ALTA today. All right, we are back here on the Morning Woodward Show. Jeff, it's Tuesday. We release our top 10 teams in the NFL. Let's get it started. Alex, whenever you're ready. Your list was interesting. Uh, there was just one team I refused to have on the list. Okay, <laughs> I can't wait. Not for because. This one. So, let's talk about two things while this. Uh, I, and graphic I think, gets by the up. way, I think I know the team, and I'm going to explain why it was hard. But I ended Are up. Are you talking about the there. Chargers? Yep, they're in my top ten as well. Oh, okay. I don't have them as high as you do. I believe. Okay, I could be wrong. Are we good, Alex? Or not yet? God bless. Thank you. All right, I got Tennessee at 10. I'm not putting Los Angeles. I don't like them. They're 3-3. Three and three. They just lost another offensive lineman, I believe, to a torn Achilles. Their offense is solely relying on Cooper Cup. Not a fan. I I can't knock you for having them in the top 10, but for me, I, I, I just can't do it. I just can't. I have a surprise on the list. We'll get to it later. But for me, Tennessee, coming off the bye, a healthy Derrick Henry. They're gearing up to... Really take command of this division right now. I'm with you. Uh, my ten would be LA Rams, and the reason why I put them in there is I get the offensive line and how terrible it is. But overall, if we're talking about talent, I mean they still have you know probably the most talented defense. Although they haven't been playing up to it, I think I'm I'm still going to allow the Rams to be in my top ten as of right now. You can tell they're on the back half. They're they're probably. Um, a loss away from being completely out, but I, I want to throw them in there. I still got respect for the Rams, but Matthew Stafford ain't helping my case. He's not playing well. Offensive line can't protect anybody. And let's do number nine for you, because I'd like to tell you why I left them out. Mm -hmm. Dallas, go for it. Uh, well, this is based on th Dak. their defense and Dak coming back. I think, again, we don't know what Dak, he might even look worse than Cooper Rush. Who knows? But I'm putting the Cowboys in there. I hate the Cowboys. I'm not trying to say right now, yeah, the Cowboys are this fantastic team, but defensively, they are terrifying. And offensively, they still got some talent, and you're bringing Dak back. So I, I think they should be in there. If you go, four, what was it, 4-1 and one with Cooper Rush? What was it, 4-1? Yeah, four and one. I think they deserve to be in there. So I'm Yeah, look, the they're a 4-2 there. and two football team that I don't believe do many things well offensively. Defensively, they're very good. Offensively, I don't like it's, it. It's anemic, yeah. I'm looking for balance. And I don't see the balance in Dallas right now. And you saw what Philly did to Micah Parsons. They basically made him a non-factor in that game. So um, I would be concerned if I'm a Dallas fan. But, again, you get the lines this week. Dak Prescott back. Should be a bounce-back game for yep. Dallas. But I got him out of my top ten as well. I've got the Jets at nine. Jets at nine. I'm still not sold on this team being the ninth or eighth or seventh best team in the NFL. I'm just not. Granted, the standings work that way. I just don't believe it. I don't think they're that high. Zach Wilson, you know how I feel about quarterback play. I think it's so vital to your team's success. Yep. I'm not seeing it in New York. Robert Sala overcoming quarterback play and still has the Jets 4-2. They get credit. They're in the top 10, but they're a team I expect, along with really the team in front of them, to maybe fall out in the next few weeks. And that's the Los Angeles Chargers. We both agree. They're at 8. Yeah. I, I'm not impressed. They're teetering. Like I'm they, just not impressed. Yeah. They're 4-2, and two, but I'm, I'm not impressed at all. Now, you could also spin it the other way and say, well, they're 4-2. and two. They haven't played their best football. Could Head be, injuries. Could be a lot of things to come. Eh, I'm not sold. No. Uh, the decision-making from Brandon Staley, I'm not it's a fan disgusting. of it. you got to take points. You have to just – every game is different. You can't have the same philosophy for every game. If you did, you would lose more often than not because you're predictable. You're not changing. You need to adapt to certain situations. I, I'm not a fan of the Chargers. They're going to be at 8 this week, but just uh, I don't like yeah, it at all. Plenty of room to grow for the Chargers. I still obviously like Justin Herbert, but he, what did he throw? 57 pass attempts yesterday, not a touchdown. I mean, that's concerning. So You got the Jets at 7? Yeah, I think they deserve to be. Uh, you have them at 9, so again, it's, it just depends. Now, are they a better team if the Chargers and the Jets faced right now? 
I like how the Jets are playing. They go to Lambeau and you beat up on Aaron Rodgers and the Packers. I get they're not the Packers from last year, but they're better defensively. Didn't stop them. They got some game records over in New York. Quinn and Williams is a monster. And they still got, again, second round picks contributing. So shout out to the Jets. They're, they're playing great football. Uh, I have them at seven. Right, right behind the other team in New York. Number seven, I've got the Cincinnati Bengals. Good win against New Orleans. Joe Burrow looked back to form. So did Jamar Chase. Yep. The defense made plays at times in that game. I still have some question marks, but in an AFC North that is clearly up for grabs, the Cincinnati Bengals, for me, took a big leap in, in a positive way in my books. Top six, I got Miami. They Which lost. I'm, I'm a little they, shocked They've about lost that. three straight. They have no business. I know. They get Tua back. Oh, well, and okay, so I am I am projecting, projecting what I saw before he was hurt. Trust me, I, I'm. Hey, listen, I had him in my top ten week one. They so were I phenomenal like him, the but, first three weeks of the season. Yeah. The offense was explosive. I think the defense will have a bounce back game against Pittsburgh this week. Tua will come back. Waddle Hill. That offense will start getting. It'll start to get going. I think Miami is the sixth best team in football with Tua Tagovailoa back. Uh, that's okay. I, I disagree, but I, I respect it. All right, projection. I'm going with the New York Giants. I think the Giants right now, I mean, impressive is an understatement. They're, they are playing great. And again, you don't really have a franchise quarterback right now. Daniel Jones, he's probably a year or two away from either being a backup or being el- going somewhere else uh, in the NFL. But for me, the Giants as a roster, not the most talented but they're finding ways to win, and I can appreciate that. 5-1 and one on the year. They deserve to be in there for me. Talk about their schedule. I don't care. They still have good wins. They beat the Packers. What is this about their schedule? They beat the Titans, Packers, yep. and the Ravens. Thank you. Thank you. And what they just did this past weekend, there's no question. They're a top-six team to me. So for I got me, them in top there. five. I love what Brian Dable's doing. Mm-hmm. The way they're setting up their team for success offensively and defensively has been nothing short of phenomenal. Yes, they're 5-1. and one. Do I think they're a legitimate contender for a Super Bowl? No, I don't. Quarterback play, like I said, is a big deal for me. Very tough for me to put the Giants ahead of the Bengals or the Dolphins on this list. But you know what? The record speaks for itself. Until they show me otherwise, they are a team that is properly coached. They show up to play. They held Lamar Jackson to, what, 10 points in the second half, I believe. Not even six points, I believe. I'm a fan of the way this team is playing football at the moment. 24 to 20 victory mm-hmm. at home against the Ravens. A big fourth quarter comeback. I am I'm a big fan of the Brian Dable era so far in New York. They run the ball well. They're committed with Saquon Barkley. And the rest is history. I mean, you got Cincinnati top five. That's a big leap, but I'm, I, I I'm, wouldn't I'm yeah. not gonna hate on it. He's arguably the best quarterback outside of the top five yep. on the list. Yeah, no, that's why I have them. Although the Giants have a better record, this is kind of the part of the list where I just felt like listen, the Bengals, although they're three and three, they're a much better team. And this is a team who's going to make the playoffs. They're they're going to start winning games. Um, you go to New Orleans and you beat the uh, the 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 Saints. I got to give them credit there. And I think the Cincinnati Bengals right now, they're they're going to be on the upswing. I love obviously Joe Burrow, Joe Shiesty. Hey, listen, Jamar Chase had a bounce back game as well. That's the form we've been looking for all year. Fantasy owners stand up, but I'm going with the Bengals at five. I think they're a top five team, honestly. Still, even even being three and three. Well, we agree four to one. I mean, yeah, it's pretty. What's standard. there to say? Minnesota, we both agree yep. five and one, arguably the best team in the NFC at the moment outside of Philly. You look at Kansas City. We're not moving them just because they lost. They lost to the best team in football, which is Buffalo. And then again, these, Philly, te- these teams are all division winners. I mean, right now leaders. you're looking at those first four teams, and I think there's a gap between those first four and everybody else. Me too. Me too. And honestly, I would say the first three, and I would put a gap between. I even before yeah. I even put Minnesota. Now, I wouldn't in that put Minnesota in the atmosphere of, of I Bills, wouldn't. Philly, yeah, and so Chiefs. I would say they're top playing three. They're playing significant good. gap four. A small gap, and then five in the rest of the top ten. Yeah. No, there's, bad. There's, there's nobody. The only thing I, I struggled with is I want to give the Eagles credit, but the Bills, man. The only loss on the season, yes, it, they're 4-1, they're 5-1. and, one, five and one. The, the Eagles are different now. They're undefeated still. But just the Bills. You go to Arrowhead and you beat the Chiefs. They deserve to be tied. The, they deserve to be arguably one, one of still. the better wins in all the football. Yeah, right, right now. now, yeah, it is. So, no question, we agree one through three, and I don't really see this that that top three changing. I too couldn't much. put L.A. I couldn't put Dallas in there. Yeah. I just no, no chance, no chance. <laughs> but Miami, you put Miami at six in there. was high. I agree, but 
I'm projecting with them. I, I do think they're one of the better teams in football when healthy. So I expect them to give the Bills a run for their money. But looks like the Miami Dolphins, after their 3 0 start, will have to just settle for the wild card this year. Yeah, when jo- do we get back? Go ahead. No, I was going to say, Josh Allen might be on his way to win it. He's trying to get an MVP. Oh, he's, it's, it's he's his to lose in. this year. Yeah, it is. It's his to lose this year. When we get back, top of the hour, the phone lines are open 313 552. 6322. That's 313-552-6322. Call in. I want to hear, as does Jeff, your opinions on the Detroit Lions at the moment, where you have them, and it's a thought you should consider during the break, is that the Lions have never won more than six games after starting a 1-4. and four. We'll get to the people in just a bit, but before we do, Jeff, our good friends over at Big Frog. Well, guys, if you want some more sports gear, head over to Big Frog and Novi. Stop in, tell them we sent you, and they will print a shirt for you out on the spot. Go to Big Frog and Novi today, get your free t-shirt, or you can visit them online at bigfrog.com slash Novi. For a limited time only, all new burgers and loaded fries at Big Boy. It's not a Slim Jim, it's THE Big Jim. The chili cheese is such a tease. Guess what else is new? The bacon blue. How about upgrading those fries? Chili cheese fries, baked potato fries, nacho fries, what will it be? Satisfy those taste buds at Big Boy. My name is Lee. I've lost 35 pounds on the Custom Health Center program. So the three biggest benefits that I've gotten from this uh, this program has been, I'm not snoring anymore, I have a lot of energy, uh, it's great, and oh by the way, look at this. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. I'm... Call us at 844-789-THIN or visit customhealthcenters.com for a free consultation and get started for as little as $5 a day. Sports Network in Detroit that starts with a W. You know, because we win. Woodward Sports, Detroit's winning sports network. Jeff Iafredi here. Let me tell you about our friends at Swiss. Because it's time to talk about Swiss, and I'm not talking about Hammond Swiss. Swiss Insurance Group. And did you know that one in six kids will develop a medical condition that makes them uninsurable? Swiss Insurance can help you save money on your auto and home, resulting in no out-of-pocket costs to insure your children. Check with Mark at Swiss Insurance and make sure your family is protected. All right, we are back. Top of the hour here on the Morning Woodward Show. Oh, Jeff, fun fact, the Lions in their history this, have this stat never, is unreal. have never won six games, more than six games, excuse me, after a one and four start. The Lions never, you know, overcoming adversity? Never, never well, won. I mean, at that point, one and four is a disaster start to your season. Now, if you're talking one and two or oh and two, we, I would agree with you. But I want to I want to get to the people. <laughs> Let's go to Eric out in Detroit, Michigan. Eric, you're on the Morning Woodward Show. What do you got for us, buddy? What's up, guys? What's going on? Good morning. Hey, hey, Jeff, man, you got to take the Rams out of your top ten, man. Come on, man. <laughs> <laughs> they beat Carolina, man. Come on. <laughs> I know. That, that, trust me, that ain't, you know, especially you got Robbie Anderson on the sideline you know, barking at coaches. Probably not a good victory, but I still got faith in them. They're hanging on, my man. They're hanging on. <laughs> Right. But uh, I wanted to bring something to y'all's attention. Okay, Jeff, Adam, Jeff, I think organizationally the Lions need to do some uh, some reevaluating their thinking in the draft when it comes to uh, basically passing on all these quote-unquote questionable character guys. Like, I remember a trend. It started with Randy Moss. We passed on him. Minnesota picked him up. Then it came when we could have got Tyron Matthews. We mm-hmm. passed on him. Mm-hmm. Then we talked about we should we could have a running back. Well, imagine if you didn't pass on Joe Mixon and you had DeAndre Swift. So it, a lot of these guys had issues in college, but when you take them from that college and put them somewhere with that structural a nice organization, they get their stuff together. So it's like you can't keep passing on these all pro talents because quote unquote issues in college. Come on, man, they can't. 
they don't make mistakes. And you holding that against them. But a lot of them have actually gotten to the NFL, and you don't hear no off-the-field issues about them. That's uh, one point. And I, and I do think Brad Holmes, I know you love a guy because he keeps talking about he loved Pascal, he loved Levi, he just was in love with that character, but you can't pass up the injury history. And I like Barry Holmes. I'm high, I'm high on him. But it's scary because it's like you keep drafting injury players and Dan's not learning from his mistakes. Or do we have a, a GM and a head coach that don't learn from their mistakes or don't want to – they see their mistakes, but they just keep going back to the well. It's like – you can't keep doing that or you're going to cost yourself your own job. What you guys think? Man, you, you know, think, honestly, I Eric, I think you're on to something, to yeah. be honest with you, because there there is something to that. I don't think it's everything, but there is some merit in that whole conversation. I'll tell you why. Yes, you don't want to pass on talent because of character issues. And I think character issues are much different than injury issues, right? Injury issues, to me, are a bigger concern. Yes. Right? Yeah. Character, what, what is it really? Right? Did you kill somebody in college? No. Uh, what, what did you do in college? Had an that, attitude. What? You're, you had a bad attitude? <laughs> All right. A good coach can clean that up. Now, are you going to whiff on a lot of these, quote, character guys? Sure, but, I mean, there aren't many. There aren't many every year where you're like, man, this is supreme talent. But, boy, he's got character issues, Jeff. We are talking about this with Kayvon Thibodeau. He went number five overall. Nobody cares. Nobody cares about your character. You know why? Because when you step into a locker room of 53 adults, you're set in place. And if you don't act right, you're gone. It's that simple. I.E. Cam Akers. Didn't have character issues coming out. And look at That's all been reported. So, I'm not... I'm not going to disagree, Eric. What I would say is, yes, organizationally, something does eventually have to change where you are taking a guy with a bad track record or somebody where you say, ah, oh, you know what, third-round pick, character issues, would have been a second-round pick. Those are the guys you want, right, with high talent, but they fall in the draft. Those are the guys you want, but you don't want to be selecting a low-character guy in the top of the first round. No. Or at the end of the first round. Yeah, it's, it's, it's a dicey situation. I think there is some merit to it, though. Let's go to Kenneth out in East Point. Thank you for calling, Eric, by the way. Well done. Kenneth, you're on the morning show. What do you got for us, buddy? You freaking box of bolts. I'm so sick and tired of you guys down the line. Neither one of you had them in the Week 7 Power Rankings. <laughs> and once they get Lamar Jackson and Cam Akers, you guys are screwed. <laughs> Oh, art, art, art. You, you, no, this isn't art. This is Kenneth <laughs> from East Point. You guys always talk about the fourth down Lions. Let's give Dan Campbell a little bit of time. That's all. Let's just give him some time. All right, my mom's calling. I got to go. <laughs> what? Oh, yeah. Fish. F fish. <laughs> art ever calls the show again. I want a heads up. I know you knew it was him. Oh, that was funny. Okay. Don't write Kenneth. It's obviously Art. <laughs> I'm. Hey, I talked to the caller. I, they say their name, so I got to put Don't their name the on the sheet. Don't let the callers lie to you, buddy. Have you heard of a prank or a joke? I love how he Do says, not wait until we get Lamar and Cam Akers. Oh, God. Do you not God know what a joke is? Like our defense is giving up 30 a game. Uh, uh, you got to love it. God bless you. All right. <laughs> oh. Patience. One day at a time. Patience. One day at a time. Line's not in the top ten. What an issue. <laughs> <laughs> uh, oh, maybe man. if they had a defense in a, in a good right. coach. I don't know who this caller is. We're just going to send them on air. Let's see. All right. What do you got for us this morning, bud? Bart, you there, buddy? Yeah, I'm here. Hey, what's up, man? Hey, to add it to Eric about character issues, Lamar Blunt unrestricted free agent goes to New England and scores how many touchdowns in his career? Quite a few. Quite a few. Um, 
getting back to the Lions, you know, it, it's something that uh, I know I sent you guys, you know, my, my predictions, you know, being a longtime Lions fan, this is the time of year we talk about the draft, but I'm not going to do that today. Um, but it, it's something that what's interesting is last year, Glenn was raised up on a pedestal for what he did with the defense in the last half of the season. I'm trying to figure out why he's not doing that this year. Um, maybe it's because he's been too predictable, like uh, the running back from Seattle, Seattle said. Um, but it's, it's something that Campbell, you know, he just needs to pull back his, how should I say, um, inexperience, you know, with the four down, you know, situations where he keeps on going for things that, you know, if you look at the analytics, he, Someone should be saying, hey, stop. You don't sit here and go for um, fourth and nine. Um, you know, grant you having a, a kicker has is, is been an Achilles heel for the Lions this year. Um, going into the rest of the season, it's going to be tough. You know, I'm a, like I said last week, I'm an optimist, you know, and the Lions are not going to lose this past weekend. Well, but it, it's something that, you know, they uh, definitely, it doesn't look good. Well, let, yeah. let me ask you this, Bart. The Lions, in their history, yeah. after starting one and four, have never won more than six games. So, at the most, they will be at best they will be five and seven. Is that enough for you to say, you know what? I'm confident giving Dan Campbell next year. Um, if he's competitive, yes. If he's blown out like he was in New England, no. And then you mentioned something about his decision-making and having to change it. I wholeheartedly agree. Just because you have a certain aggressive mindset doesn't mean you don't maneuver away from it game to game. Look at Bill Belichick. Why is Bailey Zappi averaging almost 300 yards throwing in the air? Why? Bill Belichick is one of the more conservative coaches, especially with rookie quarterbacks. That That's not real, but... You find holes in a defense, and you look to exploit them. You change your game plan week to week. Right. You are not the same team last week that you are the next week or the week after. And all I'm seeing is a coach that has one way to do it, and it's it's absolutely killing him. You know, it, it, it's something that, from my experience, you know, when we were winning in high school, you know, we ran the same play because the other team couldn't stop it. You know, we found a flaw in their defense. And we ran the same play. It's something that this Lions coaching needs to do the same thing. You, they need to find the weaknesses of the opposing teams, or the team you know sits there and throttles somebody like what Philly did the, the, the Parsons this past week. Take advantage of that. You know, watch the tape, put that into your game plan. That, you know, because you're going to face you know probably the MVP on defense this year if he remains healthy. And how did Philadelphia neutralize him? And you got to take a look at that from a coaching standpoint. It's not the players that do that. It's a coaching game plan. And that's something that, you know, the Lions have struggled this year. Um, the only time they've really done it well was, you know, that one half against Washington mm -hmm. where they came out on both sides of the ball and just dominated. And, and I'm not sure what's the problem, but it, it's, it's, it, you can see it's there. Uh, getting Williams for the second half of the season is definitely going to help their offense you know, with that weapon of that speed, because you can't teach speed in the NFL. And yeah, it, he, it's something that's going to be Williams exciting. does add a lot of speed. He really gives you a lot more than just uh, really what you have now, even with Reynolds and DJ Chark. But, Bart, I appreciate the call. Uh, well done, man. Uh, let's uh, welcome back anytime. Talk soon. All right. Sounds good. Yep, have yep. a good day, guys. You too. Yeah, you too. All right, let's go to David out in Romulus. David, you're on the Morning Woodward Show. What do you got for us, buddy? I'm Jeff. Good morning, guys. How are you? Good. How are you? Uh, good, good. Um, so I was watching you guys' show the other day and kind of like wanted to talk to you, Adam, about how, like what you were saying with uh, Dan Campbell. It, as Lions fans, it's not like we're um, giving Dan Campbell a pass or excuses. It's just... You, like, we're seeing with our own two eyes how our defense is, like, having a hard time stopping anybody and, you know, just not really having any, like, not, not talent's not the issue. It's, it's, it's coaching. 
So it's not like we're like ex excusing him or anything. It's just we can just don't have like a very good defense when it comes down to coaching. Well, you've played five games, and this is my problem, David, is you've played five games, and your defense only gave up one touchdown against New England, and they shut out Washington in the first half, and they dominated Minnesota's offense for three and a half quarters. So, yeah, I, I do have a problem with it because it's only talent. The only reason Lions fans like yourself or anybody else are calling in or commenting in the Woodward Sports Chat about, quote, talent is because they're 1-4. and four. If they're 2-3, and three, hell, even 3-2, and two, nobody's talking about talent. They're talking about what a great job coaching Dan Campbell is doing. Overcoming what that lack of talent. What a good coach he is. He's overcoming this. He's game planning that. That, that is the uh, epitome of what the Lions are this year. The only reason we're talking about talent now is because the team is 1-4. and four. And your head coach has made questionable decision after questionable decision after questionable decision. It's that simple. When we get back, let's go over our college football playoff bracket. I can't wait. Top four teams. Michigan, are they in? We'll find over out. Clemson? We'll find out. We'll find out it's just a bit. It's going to get spicy. We'll find out just a bit. But before we do, Jeff, our good friends over at the Sports Marketing Agency. Well, guys, the Sports Marketing Agency helps spread awareness about mental health and substance abuse. Their new podcast, this is the S Word, will help fight the stigma about seeking help. If you or someone you know is struggling, tell them or even yourself to head to thesportsma.com for more information. Introducing the Planet Fitness Guide to getting that post-workout glow. Step one, what's your why? More epic energy, better sleep, blow off steam? Step two, join Planet Fitness for just $10 a month and get moving in our clean and spacious clubs. Step three, bask in that post-workout glow. Join Planet Fitness today for just $10 a month. Join today at any of the 50 plus Detroit area locations. Get a shot up. This is for the win. All of Detroit sports teams live on Woodward. All of Detroit sports coverage lives on Woodward Sports. Driving the best in Detroit sports coverage. Make sure you download the Woodward Sports app in the App Store and the Google Play Store today. Take Woodward Sports with you wherever you go and listen live on your phone or mobile device. Jeff Iyer Freddy here from Fulling Warehouse because I'm going to tell you about it, guys. It's in Hamtramck. It's the home of the original football bowling game. Two to play for $12, the unlimited open play. Or you could, play, you could pay $120 for a lane reservation for up to 10 people. You want to be like JJ. You want to be like Peyton Thorne. Go out there and get to Fulling Warehouse. $2 Mr. Beer Machine, full bar. Check it all out. Bring you, your buddies. Bring everybody. Come to Fulling Warehouse. You can check it out. FullingWarehouse.com. All right, we're back here on the Morning Woodward Show. Jeff, our college football playoff brackets. Okay, Let's strange. check it out. Let's throw it up on the screen. These are the four that are in at the moment. Jeff, your thoughts. Ohio State versus Tennessee. Georgia, Michigan. So the problem I have here is there is still the game to be played in Columbus. And if both teams somehow run the table, I do think a one-loss Big Ten team does miss the playoff. Given the season plays out how you expect it, with Clemson likely running the ACC, and you would have to look to the Big 12 and say, they have a legit chance. They're yep. a Big 12 champion. So there's, there's something there. USC, a one-loss Pac-12 champion, maybe? Maybe? But a wait and see as well. As of right now, I would say Ohio State, Tennessee, Georgia, Michigan. Those are the four. And I'm moving Tennessee to four, Michigan to three. I think Michigan have been impressive all season. A big top, uh, excuse me, a, a big win against a top 10 team in Penn State this past weekend. A dominating win. Yep. Tennessee, a thrilling win over Alabama. Probably have the best win in the country, if we're honest yeah. here. And that's but, why I'd probably put them at three. Even though you but, might not agree, I, I think they deserve okay, to be So three. hear me out. It's not yeah. that I don't agree with you. It's I don't want to see 
Ohio State, Michigan, Georgia, Tennessee. Oh, okay. Does that make sense? Yeah, I get you. Because I'm getting the game, right, at the end of the year. Let's right. say this is it. The season's over. Well, I I have the game, and you've let in a big one-loss Big Ten team. Okay, do I want to see them repeat again? Or would I rather have them go up against opposing teams and maybe, just maybe, get a repeat in the final? Or I don't. I'm going to stick with Michigan at three on this one. And there's a lot of things that are, that are coming for a lot of these teams, like Ohio State versus Michigan at the end of the year, Georgia versus Tennessee. These, all these teams are going to play each other. So as of right now, it, it's, it's hard to kind of organize them. That's why I can't wait for the expansion because there's more teams that deserve to be in this conversation. And I have my list here. So whenever you're ready, I'll give you mine. Go for it. So number one, I agree. I got Ohio State. Uh, one and two, I don't disagree. I, I have Georgia, number two. Tennessee, I'm going to have number three just because the, the win. I mean, that's unreal to, to beat. The, the year they're having, too, they're undefeated. You beat Alabama in the way they beat them, too. I have them just above Michigan. Michigan at four. And who I have on the outside, five and six, is Clemson at five, six, Alabama. I think Clemson right now, especially how they're playing, if they, especially, you, you might have to really consider Clemson at this point. Clemson are going to get in. They yeah. continue to play the way they are. They, they're they're probably, run the table. If I had to make a prediction, I would even say, I think Tennessee loses to Georgia. Do you let in a one-loss Tennessee team, or if Clemson runs the table, does Tennessee ta- or excuse me, Clemson runs, runs the table? Do you let Clemson in? And in well, my who's opinion, I like Clemson in. in right now, right? Let's look at that yeah. on the outside in. You got Clemson seven and zero, Bama six and one, Ole Miss seven and zero. Ole Miss still has to play Bama, so what do you do with Ole Miss? <laughs> uh, yeah, the SEC this year is insane. You have UCLA who could be an undefeated Pac-12 champion. You don't know, but if USC beats UCLA, will you see USC suddenly skyrockets all the way back up? Like we are legitimately talking about an SEC champion. A Big Ten champion, a one-loss SEC champion, or excuse me, a one-loss SEC team. Yep. And either Clemson, USC, or as of right now, as it stands, TCU. Yeah, TCU's playing really well, too. And that'd be out of the Big 12. And my question to you is, if USC runs the table, you know what, let's backtrack. Georgia runs the table, they win it all, they win the SEC, whatever. Mm Mm-hmm. So Ohio Alabama's State done. runs a table, okay? Tennessee's a one-loss team. Ole Miss is a one-loss team. Bama's a two-loss team. Clemson runs the table. Michigan's a one-loss team. TCU runs the oh table. My God. UCLA runs the table. Look at that. Do you put in Georgia, Ohio State? Yes. But do you kick out Clemson, TCU, or UCLA? That's the predicament you're in right now. And that doesn't include the one-loss SEC teams and the one-loss Big Ten team in Michigan. I think at that point, you'd result to who has the bigger wins. And that's based on if Ohio State beats Michigan, obviously. At that point, that's why it's so tough. There's probably seven or eight teams you could legitimately make an argument for right now. I think at that point, Adam, you'd probably look to who has the best win. I I mean, at that point. UCLA then. Yeah. I I mean, UCLA. UCLA and Clemson. I put them in there. Those but two. I believe Clemson, by the way, their schedule doesn't get any easier. No. Clemson's got a tough schedule coming up. They've got home to Syracuse, who are ranked 14th, by the way, on the road to Notre Dame. Go Irish! Mute your mic. <laughs> home to Louisville, home to Miami, home to an SEC team in South Carolina. There's, there's a loss there. There could be a loss there for Clemson. And my question is, if they run the ACC, but they lose an out-of-conference game that, to Notre Dame or South Carolina, do you put them in? I, at that point, no. Yes? I, I, considering who's waiting behind them, I think that's hard. Mm. Can the expansion just come already? This is ridiculous. I mean, all these teams, too. Like, Cle- you, you could argue outside of the top four, Clemson, Alabama, Old Miss, TCU, like these teams all deserve to eventually. Have you, it, Tough. If Clemson loses if to a non-conference a, team, I, I think at that point, if there was considering who's around them. If there was ever a year for them, the expanded playoff, you know what you'd year. have right now? It's this year. 
<laughs> it's this year. <laughs> it really is. It, this is it's you would have Georgia and Ohio State on the bye week. You would have Tennessee versus USC. You would have Michigan versus Oklahoma State. Clemson versus Oregon. Bama versus UCLA. Ole Miss versus TCU. Wow. Right? Wow, indeed. Yes, wow. Th- those are the matchups you get. You get, <laughs> you get Tennessee, USC, high-powered offenses, Oklahoma, excuse me, Oklahoma State and Michigan, Clemson, Oregon, UCLA, Bama, Ole Miss, TCU, with Ohio State and Georgia on the bye week. Give me the expanded playoff sooner than later. Yeah, this if a year you need it, it's this year. Um, I would probably lean. I'm still going to stick. I think at the end of the year, it's still going to fall how I have it. I think the two teams that will miss out, in my opinion, it's either going to be Clemson jumps Tennessee or you keep Tennessee in that top four and it's Alabama and Clemson on the outside. But still, there's still more deserving teams. So it's a tough one. But I think my top four is, is how it's going to stay in the top four that was on the graphic. I think that's, in my opinion, we'll see what Tennessee does. And, and they face Georgia. So even if they just lose to Georgia, I think they still deserve to get in considering how they're playing and the win over Alabama. So it is what it is. This is probably the toughest year. I would not want to be a part of that committee. I'll, I'll say that because you're going to have some tough decisions to make. And a can team I, that deserves to get right in will Right now it's difficult, it. but in reality, by the time we get to week 12, week 13, it's not going to be difficult because there will be teams with a loss or two, and they'll be out of the conversation. And there will be maybe one, two, or three undefeated teams by then. And I'm telling you, look, for all the talk about Ohio State, and I do think they're the best team in the country. I would agree with you there. I'm just saying, Michigan haven't won in Columbus since 2000. They've won loss. They haven't won in Columbus since 2000. I'm not counting Michigan out on the road in Columbus towards the end of the year. No. With that offensive line, that defensive front, that ability to run the ball, just saying. Even just they, gonna say it. And if they play, if they play Ohio State tough, and they're only, I, I would say the most impressive win you could argue would be Penn State. I still think they would deserve considering well, how depends. that Ohio State goes. Right, because if you have a two-loss Pac-12 champion or right. a two-loss Big 12 champion and a one-loss ACC champion and a bunch of one-loss SEC teams, now the conversation becomes Georgia, Ohio State, Clemson. And then your selection of a two-loss champion or a one-loss Bama, which I don't think will be the case. They'll be out of it this year. I think they have one more game to lose. A one-loss Ole Miss, a one-loss Tennessee, or a one-loss potentially, let's say, Michigan. Well, then now we're having a real conversation. Right. I like it. I like it. I like where this is going. Good for college football. Oh, let's see. Notre Dame almost beat Ohio State at Ohio State. It was the first game of the year, wasn't it? Yeah, it was. Yeah, but they still almost beat them. Like, Alabama second week almost lost to Texas. But but they're up there. And Texas is down, even though they killed Oklahoma. By the way, can I bring up uh, your Kansas Jayhawks that you said would beat Oklahoma? Bad defense? Um, what did I watch on Saturday? Oh, I saw Oklahoma. 52-45. See, yeah. The problem I have with that narrative Fish, that shut up. They, Oklahoma won. Well, hold you on. said they were going to get murdered. Hold on, hold on. I the, didn't say the, they were going to get murdered. Eh, watch back the show. The problem I have, Fish, with that narrative of yeah, they they struggled against Notre Dame. If you look at the end of the year and they've beaten Michigan, Fish, fired. Penn State, Mike, and they obliterated Michigan State, I'm not looking at the the game at the beginning of the year and and holding that against them, especially if you beat Penn State and Michigan. Those are two good wins. So, um, yeah, I'm not doing that. Ohio State right now, they're the best team in the country. I mean, even if you want to nitpick them, they're, they're, they're playing the best. So, give me Ohio State. Georgia and Ohio State, I think we can safely say they're, they're in the playoff. They're going to be in the playoffs. Yeah. I, I would have to agree. I would. It's just the other two teams. I like it. College football looks great. It really does. It's in a good position right now. I have no issues with it. Give me the expansion sooner than later. But uh, that is it for now. We'll take callers coming up in just a bit. Our Michigan legitimate national contenders, 313-552-6322. Do you believe Michigan have a shot in Columbus this year? 
And do you believe overall that they can compete with a Georgia, a Tennessee, a Bama, whoever it may be, a Clemson? All that and more coming up in just a bit. But before we go, I got to tell you about Lady Jane's Haircuts for Men. Come to Lady Jane's for an award-winning haircut experience. And it's your last month to register to win the car of your dreams from Les Stanford Chevrolet Cadillac. Lady Jane's Haircuts for Men. Open seven days. Walk in any time. No appointment necessary. It's wicked awesome. The sports marketing agency would not be who we are without great community partners like Higuera Health and Carol Zaniga. It's an awesome opportunity to partner with your organization. Higuera Health is a, a comprehensive behavioral health organization. We serve children through older adults with mental health, substance use, and uh, developmental disabilities across Western Wayne counties and really excited to now be in Downriver communities as well. Give us a call at 734-458. Four six zero one. You don't have to go to the beach, man. You don't have to get your butt crack full of sand. You just need the little chili peppers, man, to get that glowing beach chili peppers tan. With 26 locations in the Metro Detroit area and more coming, Chili Peppers Tanning is where you'll find the cleanest salons in the D. Join the Pepper Club for the best deals on unlimited tanning. Head to ChiliPeppersTanning.com. You just need a little Chili Peppers, man. You have an opinion? Make sure it's seen and heard. Tweet us, hop on the YouTube chat, slide in the DMS at Woodward Sports on all social media. Join Armani and Edwards October 27th, next Thursday. Live in Dearborn, Braylon, Ryan, and Maz will be on site at Michael Phillips' Keller Williams office in Dearborn, Michigan. Braylon will be doing meet and greets after the show at 4.30, so stick around for trunk or treat in the Keller Williams parking lot at 6 p.m. as well. Food trucks, costumes, and more, all from Michael Phillips and his wonderful staff at Keller Williams. All right, 9.28 here on a Tuesday morning. I feel awful, not going to lie. <laughs> you're, you're, you're a trooper this week. That's how I felt last week. Fish, but shut the you got to power through it. It's called shut life. The up, so. fish. I, <laughs> fish, shut the hell up, Fish. Shut the hell up, Fish keeping it real. It's called life. I mean, it is. Fish, shut the hell up. You think I'd love to have an off fish, day when I'm sick? I, what? Shut the hell up. <laughs> he just muted his mic. Let's go to Carlos <laughs> out in Alabama. Carlos, you're on the Morning Woodward Show. What do you got for us, buddy? <laughs> Hey, I just want to say I've been watching y'all on YouTube uh, for months, and uh, I, I like you a lot. I think you're like the Simon Cow of uh, sports radio. You tell it like it is, and uh, Terry Foster, you know, he, I love the uh, reminiscing of the old, you know, bad boys, old Lions and stuff, because I'm 43, and I remember those days. But uh, I was wanting to talk about the Lions. Uh, I, I moved down from Detroit to uh, Coleman, Alabama in 94, and uh, it's hard being a Michigan and a Detroit fan down here. But uh, I think if uh, Dan Campbell can learn from his mistakes and uh, stop going for it on fourth all the time, especially fourth and nine, maybe punt, maybe have some confidence in your kicker, and maybe the defense gets some punts and, uh, you know, maybe be 28th or whatever. Maybe they can get six, seven wins and salvage the season, and who knows like to see what y'all think about it. Well, you know what? Well, first of all, Carlos, thank you so much, yeah. by the way. Uh, we appreciate it a ton. Uh, what I would say is you've you've experienced the lines more than I have, 15 more years than I have. So you're 43. You've seen the 90s. You remember the 90s very well. You remember the early 2000s very well. The problem I have here is... This team wouldn't be in the situation they're in if they just play conventional football every once in a while. Punt the football. Take the three points. I mean, look, yeah, I'm a, I'm a younger guy and analytics and all this stuff. It's great and all, but, I mean, Carlos, some of the stuff is common sense. You're on the road. You're playing a team that is, I would say, their backs were against the wall last week in New England. You take the points, you walk away feeling good, you keep it close, you make them earn it. You don't just throw away possession after possession after possession. I mean, there's got to be some football common sense here for this team to turn it around, no? Might have lost them. They were down like a couple uh, scores, and uh, 
you know, I like you said, you got to be conventional. You know, you got to. Some guys think they're smarter than others. You know, going forward on fourth all the time. You see other guys in the league doing it. But yeah, he's definitely got to learn from his mistakes. I agree. He definitely has to learn from his mistakes. I'm not sure if the bye will change anything. He was available for media yesterday, came out and said, you know, it's really those one or two plays a game that, you know, make the difference and decide the game. And I'm like thinking in my head, dude, you make one or two awful decisions a game. Like, how about you look in the mirror instead of talking about, we got to win Wednesday, we got to win Thursday, we got to win Friday. Eventually, Carlos, it has to be shut the hell up and just go out and do it. I mean, I'm not asking for much. Again, I'm not saying they're, they have to win the Super Bowl this year. They have to get to an NFC championship. Right. Hell, I'd even say they have to win a division. I'd even say they have to make a wild card. All I'm asking is that you don't F it up. Show progress, and let's get into year three somewhat happy with the progress of this team. But clearly, that is an issue. Carlos, appreciate the call, man. You're more than welcome back anytime. Thanks, Carlos. Thank you. Yep, yep. I just, I, it frustrates the hell out of me, man. It really does. Yeah. Something You're going to sit up there. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm going to do my own Dan Campbell impersonation now. Oh, here we go. I'll, I'll sign up for the contest. I'll win the front row tickets. Hey, man. Hey, man, look, you know, we had this bye week, man, and you know, we just learned a lot about ourselves, man. You know, just got to take it one day at a time. You, it's, it's not about the talk anymore, right? You got to you gotta, you gotta do it, right? You got to actually win Wednesday. You got to win on Thursday. You got to win on Friday. It all starts on Wednesday preparation. And, you know, man, at the end of the day, man, you know, it's, you know, if, if you look back at the, those first five games, no, I didn't expect us to be this the, in this position. But the reality is, you know, we're one or two plays away from really looking at three wins. And, you know, man, I'm just uh, I'm not going to take responsibility for that, man, because, you know, I, I think I've made all the right decisions, man, or fourth down, man, man, man. So, hey, man, we're, we're almost there. Dallas coming up this week. I'm sure we're going to go for on fourth down another seven times, man. And if we convert two of them, I'm going to sit up here and say I was right and you were wrong, man. And cut. That was impressive. Come on. Come on. Can I bring something up, Look, by the I'm, way? I'm trying oh, to be fair not. here, but come on. I'm not asking for much. I didn't tell you go out and dominate all these teams. No, we, or win 12 games. We, we had them third in the division. I said you were 7-10 and 10 this year. Third in the division. And I expected you to be, quote, a pain in the ass team to play against. That's what you said. That's it. It's not like I'm sitting here throwing some wild expectation at you, Detroit. I'm not. But the reality is, it ain't looking good. And you have a head coach, man, who's sitting up there at the podium, week in, week out, doubling down on his decisions. I just, I don't see it, Jeff. I just don't see it. No. It's frustrating. Because... I get if fans want to bring up the talent because you're not wrong, but it's not always the talent we're looking at. It's his in-game decisions. Like, and it always can't be, well, his defense is so bad, he's going to go for it. should be the opposite. If your defense is that bad, why are you putting him in compromising positions? Like, I ask this question all the time, and, I, and hopefully we see some of those results this Sunday. It's not about winning. It's about just being in it. You're down 6-0 to New England. Kick the damn field goal. You go for it on fourth and nine, scoop and score, and now you're down 13-0, and the rest is history. I mean, it's um, you, you just want to see football being played the right way, right? And this is why we, we, we're always giving Brandon Staley some flack. He doesn't get a pass either. No, like, what are you it's doing, just, Brandon? Yeah, it's it's The Broncos can't score. They struggle to score the football. That is something they don't do well. When you are in scoring position, you take the points. Yeah. I get it. I'm putting the ball in Justin Herbert's hands. I can stand up there at the podium and say, look, I got one of the best quarterbacks in football. I'm going to trust him. But God, Adam, this is a question from AC in the Woodward Sports Chat. Adam, will we get your final opinion on Dan Campbell during Thanksgiving? Yes, you will. Yes, you will. Well, I'm a man of my word. I told you guys by Thanksgiving I would know everything I need to know about Dan Campbell. And I'm feeling good about where I'm at with him at the moment. Not that the game on Thanksgiving. Need a real kicker, says here on Mark. Mark, last I checked, Badgley the week prior was 4-4 four for, four for Chicago. You picked him up. You liked him so much that you cut your current kicker. 
and you still refuse to take three points. You still refuse to punt on your own 40-yard line to start the game. Oh, you know what, Bailey Zappi? If we don't make this, we're going to give a rookie. We're going to make him go 40 yards down the field for seven instead of 80. Oh, you know what? They get seven yards. They can kick a field goal. They don't even have to get a first down in their field goal range. Yeah, that's the decision we make here. Yeah, that terrible defense <laughs> gave up 22. Ben, don't break. They still lost. So it, it is what it is. It is what it is. We'll see. Apparently, Aaron Glenn's making changes to the defensive scheme. I, I want to see those implemented this Sunday. So I'll be paying attention. Should be interesting. Should be interesting. Are Michigan legit national contenders? The phone lines are open. 313-552-6322. I want to hear from Michigan fans. Do you believe this year is different? And let me, while I wait for all of you to call in, let me start with this. I think the defense is better than last year. I believe the defense is better yeah, than last year. They got year. more depth. They're more depth. They're more athletic. I... I can't say anything but good things. And going into the season, I question the defense. No McDonald, right? You lost Mike to the NFL. You have Jesse Minter. Yeah, from the same system. But, you know, was it going to be the same? It's better. And I'm not going to sit here and say, oh, I need to see it. They have to prove it to me. No, 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 no. They're, they're proving it. It's, you just watch the games. They look really good. I like the Michigan defense a ton. The offense, they control the line of scrimmage, Jeff. And I said it yesterday. I'm not going to sit here and question Jim Harbaugh or say, like, yeah, yeah, Jim, you got to open up the... Well, who am I? Dude's won 74% of his games. There are only five coaches in all of college football since 2015 that have a better record that are in the Power Five conferences. I said this yesterday. But they play community Urban colleges. Meyer, stop it. I'm not addressing that. <laughs> Urban Meyer, Lincoln Riley, Kirby Smart, mm -hmm. Nick Saban, Dabble Which Sweeney. is true. Those are the five coaches in the Power Five conferences that have a better record than Jim Harbaugh since 2015. I can talk about wanting to open up the offense, use J.J. Moore, yada, yada, yada. The reality is they have their formula for success. It works. Does it work every year? I'm not going to do that right now. But what I'm going to tell you is they're more capable of throwing the football this year than they ever have been. And I truly believe when they need him, when they do call upon him, J.J. McCarthy will be ready. They haven't had to worry about J.J. throwing 40 times a game, trying to come back and be, win on the road or beat an Ohio State. They haven't had that yet. And you know what? They don't need to. They've shown they can control a line of skirmish. And for me, that's more than enough. Let's go to Scott out in North Branch, Michigan. Scott, you're on the Morning Woodward Show. What do you got for us, buddy? Good morning, you guys. How are you doing today? Good. How are you? Not too bad. National championship contenders. I do realize that we still have the Canton game to play, even though we got to fucking step on that shitty field. <laughs> <laughs> um, but uh, no, in reality, they, if you control the offensive line, you control the game. And right now, they have a running back that they didn't have last year. That's great. They also have the downfield plays if they need it. Plus, they've got multiple option read plays to where they can throw in not only J.J., but they can trick it and throw him out to the receiver and have him run the deep route. Oof, you know what? I'm, I'm not going to disagree. I, I think Michigan are, are better. I just see it. They're better than last year. They're more capable. And I'm sorry, anybody who wants to disregard the win over Penn State, just because Michigan dominated them and made it look easy doesn't mean it was. Penn State are a good football team. Penn State will likely win 80% of their remaining games, maybe 90%. Yeah. And that's the reality. I think, yeah. The They're a good football team. Ohio State, They're a good football say. team. Yeah. But Michigan are better. Michigan are much better than everybody in the conference except Ohio State. That's the reality. Let's take a quick pause. Yep, and oh, go for it. Go for it. Aiden Hutchinson said it on big new kickoff. He was like, we've got more depth at the defensive line. He was like, we have more depth this year than we did when me and Odama were both playing on the end. 100%. You, and I was you like, see wow, that, that's coming from an NFL player. 
Wow. Fresh legs. <laughs> fresh legs, Scott. Hundred percent. I appreciate the call. The the fresh legs, the ability to rotate. You got Mike Morris playing like an all American. I mean it is it is great to see. It's right. great to see. So let's take a quick pause. When we get back, we'll wrap up the conversation. Talk about some fantasy football work league. I believe you and I are now five and one top of the league. Yep. Correct? Perfect. Correct. Cool. Morning show just continues to dominate this this company. I don't know what's going on, but <laughs> we just can't help it. Even yeah. in fantasy football. All right. When we get back, we got a lot more to cover. But before we do, Jeff, our good friends over at Cintron. Yeah, Cintron is the official energy drink of the two and one. 2-0-1. Detroit Red Wings. Cintron has combined all three of their delicious flavors into a limited six-pack sampler box. Try Cintron's great tasting cranberry or classic or sugar-free if you're watching at WarwickSports.com. They got it all in the sampler pack, which you can pre-order at CintronWorld.com slash Red Wings. Get energized with Cintron. New to the game or a season better? OddsTrader.com has everything you need to make the right bet ahead of kickoff. Begin your handicapping journey with OddsTrader. Improve your edge by finding the best price on every game from sportsbooks in your backyard. Take advantage of the numerous sign-up bonus offers to pad your bankroll. Dive into key game statistics, player performance, and even account for the projected game day weather. Best of all, you can use the Odds Trader Bet Tracker to keep a log of your action. Welcome to Odds Trader, and best of luck. Hi, I'm John from Better A Mortgage, and to me, family is more than blood. That's why I'm the biggest family in Metro Detroit. If you're looking to buy a house or refinance and need a loan, come get treated better than family by me and our entire team here at Better A Mortgage. We pride ourselves on giving you better advice, better service, and a better loan experience. That's why we are Better A. If you're looking for a new mortgage, come get treated like family. Actually, better with Better A Mortgage. Visit us at mybetterate.com or call at 248-480-4467 today. Get a shot up. This is for the win. All of Detroit sports teams live on Woodward. All of Detroit sports coverage lives on Woodward Sports. Driving the best in Detroit sports coverage. Custom Health Centers takes the willpower out of a weight loss. Whether you need to lose 20 or 120 pounds, Custom Health Centers will help you do it quickly and most importantly, safely look at kyle on the screen he's down 38 pounds since starting with dr jason and all the good people at custom health centers go to customhealthcenters.com or give them a call today at 844-789-THIN that's 844-789-THIN all right all right we're back here on the morning woodward show 9 43 tuesday morning jeff before we get to fantasy or anything else this thursday you got new orleans arizona are we going to see a shootout for the first time on prime time <laughs> i'd hope so right hell no really arizona and new orleans you think it'll be a shootout oh excuse me yeah yeah arizona what, what's the problem with that arizona i'm talking like 55 plus points <laughs> what's the problem with that <laughs> a 30 to 26 game 30 27 did kyler you get- murray getting d hop back did you just watch Arizona against the Seahawks in that defense? Did I, did I ask that? No, I didn't. Shut the hell up. <laughs> put, up put up nine, dude. Bro, I got, I got fantasy implications. How about you just? Hey, how about you be a good friend and say, you know honestly, what, Adam? I do think so. I, I'd give you a chance, buddy. <laughs> Go to honestly, hell. I have Kyler Murray too in our work league, so I hope this. Is, I hope it's a shootout. God. I'm with you. I hope so, though. I'm, I'm really up for watching a good Thursday night game. Pull out the hookah, smoke a little bit. Hopefully, I'm feeling better by then. Should be fun. Go to hell, Jeff. <laughs> Go to hell. All right. Uh, you and I are now 5-1 and one at the top of the work league. All right. Who else is in our company? Let's just call out some people right now. Who do we got? Let's see the rankings. Cheers to another hard-fought week, Adam. Thank you so much. <laughs> Thank you so much. Uh, Michael Gentry, the Detroit Lions, or excuse me, the Detroit Red Wings beat reporter here at Woodward Sports. Now 2-4, and four, sadly, after getting his ass kicked by me, 122-99. <laughs> to 99. Sorry, Michael. Better luck next year, buddy. <laughs> All right, let's go to the league standings. You got me in uh, first place, 5-1, uh, and one, with the most points scored in the league. No, actually, second most points scored in the league. Who's first? You. Ha-ha. So in the East Division, I'm 5-1 and one at the top. In the West Division, you're 5-1 and one at the top. Oh, yeah. In second place in the East is Flannel Sam. That son of a gun. Patrick, Patrick Mahomes, Mahomes in the, the first round. <laughs> and he's 4-2. and two. Unbelievable. 
And then you got Justin Slanick at four and two, and then Spencer in fourth place at three and three. Spencer's team stacked, by the way. Uh, we got Roman Bruno. Shout out to Roman, big fan of his. By the way, great articles. We're just gonna let Roman's trade slide. By yeah, the way, yeah. that trade he made was a robbery. <laughs> Look at you. You should tell. I want to tell the people that trade. See what you and guys. And then the think. best, in my opinion, the best player in this entire league has been Ryan Lentz. Ryan Lentz, 0-6. <laughs> Phenomenal job this year. I mean, you look at the numbers. His team has scored a whopping league low, 581 points. And he's given up a whopping league high, 815. God bless you, jo uh, God bless you, Ryan. I'm sorry. Your team sucks. Jonah, your team sucks too. You're 1-5. Braylon, you're 2-4. Uh, you just won a game. Thank God. You would have been 1-5 if that wasn't the case. You've scored the second fewest points. Gentry sucks, too. Roman Everhart, shout out to Roman. Great, great friend uh, and designer here at Woodward Sports. Hell of a job. He's 4-2. And, and Sean Murphy. Sean doesn't know anything about football, and he's 4-2. and two. Well, So I want all of you in the back who suck right now to look yourselves in the mirror. That's pathetic. Well, can I, can, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to say the, the trade that Sean and Roman, uh, our intern, made. And I want to hear the chat's perspective on this. Go for it. So Roman acquired Stefan Diggs from Sean, and this is what he gave up. A.J. Brown and Brandon Ayuk. I don't mind it. For Stefan Diggs, who's the number one receiver right now in fantasy. Say it again. Stefan Diggs for who? Uh, Brandon Ayuk, yep. who's 25th right now, and A.J. Brown, who's 9. Say yes or no in the chat. Would you, would you take that deal? I would. You would trade away Stefan for A.J. Brown and Brandon Ayuk? Or if you're Roman, yeah, you're making that I mean, trade. If you're Roman, you want, yeah. Yeah, of I mean, course. You want that trade. I, I, I wouldn't personally give up digs, but, you know, everyone can do their own, everyone can do their own stuff, man. I don't know. I would, I would have tried to get more for Stefan, but. That was a robber. I got, I got Josh Allen on a bye this week. I'm in, I'm in trouble. Everyone's saying no in the chat. That's why I love you guys. See, like, people are logical here. Because, okay, and I want to bring up a story real quick before we go to mailbag. I sent Alex. This is my other league. I'm four and two. I had the most insane fantasy week I've ever had, by the way. This is why I had to tune into that garbage last night, because I was up, I believe, I want to say like 20-something points. He had Eckler, I had Melvin Gordon. So you think, okay, well, if Gordon gets you 10 points, whatever it is, you'll be fine. Melvin Gordon got three carries, and that was it. And Austin Eckler, if you guys were watching the game, the man was a check down machine. Alex, you could throw up the graphic. Look how. <laughs> look at oh this my victory. God. Eckler, by the way, and I just want to explain this too. He had Austin Eckler. This is my buddy Nick, Seattle. We were tied. I looked at the score at the end of overtime. It was 128.96 to 128.96. And thank the Lord for that stat correction. Because it took away point twenty, and I get a win. I don't know how in the hell I won this week, but it happened, and that's all I got to say. All right, you, you take some. You, you, look, I have Josh Allen, Stephon Diggs. Speaking of Diggs, had thirty points this week. My God, I don't know how I snuck out of there with a W, but it happened. And uh, Melvin Gordon sucks. Austin Eckler, I hate you, but I love you this week because you didn't beat me. Yeah, yeah relax. He did fine. Point twenty, man. You won. Shut point. Up. 20. Without that point eight from Gordon, you don't win. So shut the hell <laughs> I know, up. I know. Let's go to mailbag. When we get back, all of your questions in the Woodward Sports chat. We'll get to them. Thank you to everybody listening over at woodwardsports.com. We'll be back in just a second. But before we do, Jeff, the best defense on and off the field. Let me tell you about Guardian Alarm. Summertime is here, and that means, actually, excuse me, fall is here. And winter is approaching. So you're still spending some time outside. But before winter gets here, protect your house. And Guardian Alarm could do that for you. It's the best defense in Detroit, in Michigan, and let Garden Alarm give you peace of mind while you're out enjoying the sunshine. Call 1-800-STAY-OUT yeah. today, and you could rest easy knowing you have 24-7 protection. That's 1-800-STAY-OUT. Yeah, let idiots. them know your friends at Woodward Sports sent you. Introducing the Planet Fitness Guide to getting that post-workout glow. Step one, what's your why? More epic energy, better sleep, blow off steam? Step two, join Planet Fitness for just $10 a month and get moving in our clean and spacious clubs. Step three, bask in that post-workout glow. Join Planet Fitness today for just $10 a month. Join today at any of the 50 plus Detroit area locations. 
It's a great day to get some sense around in your life. Ah, okay, okay, okay. There it is, there it is. Sense around, here we go. Gotta grab the cranberry. Oh wait, it's two for four. Gotta double up with the classic as well. Sense around, well, baby. Centron, available at select Kroger's, and if you want to know how, go to at CentronWorld.com. You get dope like me. You know what? Why wait? Ah, great taste, guaranteed. All right, we are back here on the Morning Woodward Show. Mailbag time. Mailbag time. Can't wait. Let's get to your questions over in the Woodward Sports chat. Oh, where do we start? Where do we start? Swift coming back this week. I have not heard anything back. It doesn't look to be the case, though. It seems like the week after Dallas, he'll be back. Who knows? Could be wrong. Look at this question from, Go for from uh, Anthony, Pistons Talk, our guy. Who gets traded first, Killian Hayes or uh, Philip Sedina? Sedina. I was just going to say, probably Sedina. I think in terms of the depth they have, you saw him play last night because of some, some guys out, Verona and, and Bertuzzi. I would probably be in Sedina as well. We'll see, though. Killian could crap the bed completely, but I, I don't think he'll be traded quicker than Sedina, but we'll see. Never know. All right. You can go ahead and answer Jesse's question. What's his question? It Read was, it. Um, don't you think it's fair for state fans to tell Adam to kick rocks if they win at the big house because he's going to try and hop back on the MSU train? Hell yeah, he is. How okay, do you so not? this is what I don't understand, and I'm here to I kinda, never hold on, hold on. I, I'll, I'll, I got it. This is what I don't understand too. Is since you're choosing to support state this year, does that mean you have to completely hate Michigan? I, I don't know. It's this narrative that you have to pick I, a I side. Know. Hold Shut, on, mute your mic. Like you can't that mute was your, your mic. Whole, that was your whole narrative. Actually, yes, because that you was your whole thing. That fish. was the whole reason why you chose state. That's no, it's not, fish. Just because yes. it, no, it's not fish. Go back to the fish. rewind the tape. This isn't this isn't in about Edwards. We listen. Braylon will give credit to Michigan State. Fish, we don't crap on the opposing school. Fish, we, shut that. We, up. That's not how that works. Wait, wait, wait. Time out. You were in August. Fish, you were going off. Up. I want to see Brian and Manny and Braylon Edwards cry fish, on Monday after Michigan State beat Michigan. Fish, shut the hell up. Mute your mic. I'm not going to ask you again. You'll never be on the show again. Mute your mic. That's fine with me. <laughs> come on. I want to be watching some cricket Fish. right now. Fish, I love you. But Anyways. Come on. Uh, first of all, I didn't jump off the MSU bandwagon. Let's start there. Yeah, you're still supporting Michigan State. Yeah. That never ended. Number two, you'd be a criminal not to acknowledge that Michigan looked like one of the five, six best teams in the country right now. You're supposed to hate them, I guess. Uh, well, that's fine. But the problem is... I have a job to do here, and you don't. <laughs> right. So, yeah. yeah, kick rocks. That's fine. Oh, God. Someone said Adam needs his own mute button for fish. <laughs> I swear to God, just had a little I button up I on the desk. I swear to God, I do. Just this is getting every irritating. Time. It's too much now. <laughs> oh, man. Just uh, fire me already. Yeah, they want you to play. It's I happening can... soon, Fish. I'm already working on your replacement. Don't Sweet. worry, Sweet. Hopefully he's nice. It, it won't be a he. Don't worry. Oh, is it she? Uh, mute your mic. <laughs> God. All right, well, uh, let's see. What else? What other questions do we have here? When should we look at Rob Rodwood, excuse me, Chris Spielman in regards to team operations? I think you guys are just overreacting from the top down. Yeah. The reality is it's a one and four football team because they are poorly coached. Through two drafts, your GM has pulled in four starters. It could be upwards of six, maybe even seven. Slow down. Don't fire Dan Campbell right now. Don't fire anybody right now. Slow down. But the reality is you are 1-4 and four because of poor coaching. That's it. That's it. No other reason. Let's see. You guys going to watch Georgia versus Tennessee? I can't Ooh. wait. Yeah, that's going to be a great game. It'll be a great game. Two undefeated teams? My God. Uh, in order for the Pistons to take off, will we need a shooting big man? Well, we have to get rid of Stewart. I think Stewart is that shooting big man, though. Yeah. Right? I think he's your stretch four. Yeah, he is. He is. After the good start, or excuse me, after their good start, how many wins do you think uh, is the ceiling for the Red Wings, Jeff? Um, 
after what we've seen so far, you'd like to say that they're going to make the playoffs. As of right now, technically, they're in that conversation. But I think they'll just miss out on the playoffs. Um, you have teams that are coming back that got better, especially in the East. I'm going to go next with 43 year, wins. Yeah, that's that's fair. That's fair. I'm going to go 43 wins. That's fair. I, I think Somewhere between 88 and 93 points, 94 points. That's where I think the Red Wings will be. This and well, how many points did they have last year? It wasn't like 70 so It wasn't good. And it wasn't, uh, we'll see. All right, let's see what else we got here. Uh, it's early, but does the SEC get two teams in? Again, I agree it's too early. As of right now, it looks like they will, though. Yes, it depends the Clemson situation. TCU, will they run the table? Will UCLA run the table? If those teams run the table, you have no choice but to put them in. So a little early. A little, a little early for that. Let's see what else we got here. When is Tuck coming, and should Noah Kim start? Against U of M. No, Noah Kim should not start. What kind of question is that? Yeah. No. I think that, that question's over. Peyton Thorne settled that debate last year and last week, to be honest with you. If, if he continuously struggled and they were like in the hole, This maybe, idea of when is Tuck coming is hilarious to me. In a season where... Because his first season was the COVID year where he beat Michigan, but you throw that season away in all honesty because it's a COVID year. You couldn't really build anything. His first full season... As the Michigan State head coach, what does he do? 11-2. and two. Right. When, when's talk coming, Adam? I don't know. What, what did you watch last year? That was pretty impressive. And if Kenneth Walker was so responsible, why didn't he win the Heisman? You can't have it both ways, people. And yes, this is a bad year for Michigan State. Yes, they're 3-4. and four. Yes, they're probably going to lose another 2-3 games. Yes, that's the reality. But... To lose all confidence in Mel Tucker, is, I think, is so premature yeah, I, I, right now. Yeah, I do, too. All right. Let's see what other questions we have. You guys think the line should trade for uh, William Jackson, the corner from Washington? He's on the trade block. I'm going to go with no. What's the player? Oh, William Jackson. Yeah, I'm just going to say no. Yeah. Um, at this point, get, get some help on that D-line. That's, that's where my head's at right now. All right. Let's see what else we have here. Uh, if Georgia, oh, I lost the question. Where'd it go? No, I like. I got it right here. If Tennessee beats Georgia but loses to Alabama in the SEC championship, does the SEC get three teams in? It's a good question. If Tennessee beats Georgia, mm, but loses to Alabama in the SEC championship, that's have, a tough one. You have three SEC teams with great wins and one loss. I don't know. How well, I feel it depends about on how many. That's that. Depends on I, how many teams I, I are undefeated. I think two of them get out at that point. What, what team are, are you going with? Depends Depends what UCLA, Clemson, Michigan, yeah, right. and all these other teams do. Yeah. Right? I like this question from Broder. Very interesting. I like the history side of it. Other than 23 and 45, can you name the only other number that Michael Jordan wore in a professional basketball or baseball game? Career hint. Uh, let's see. He only wore it in one other game. I'm going to say number 10. Is that correct? I'm pretty sure it was number 10. Should I look it up? I'm sure he'll answer in the chat. Okay. Do you have a guess before he tells us what the number is? I'm pretty sure it was 10. 10 or 12? Yeah, it's. I'm going to go somewhere in the it's teens. It's 10 or 12. I'm trying to think right now. It's 10 or 12. That's that's all I remember. It was either 10 or 12. I, I just I really can't remember. Uh, he said I was close. All right, so it is 12, right? Now you got me thinking. Yep, it's 12. Yeah. Ah! God! 12. I was close. Man! Oh, I had the jersey stolen before the game. Yep. God, I knew it. I knew it. Damn yeah, it. That, that, I saw that in Last Dance. I'm trying to think. Oh. I just, when I watched it, I'm like, what oh, was the God. Do you guys right, want well, to take you to everybody oh, okay, cool. for Gotta joining us this morning. We appreciate it as always. Uh, can't wait to show you the new show format in a few weeks. It'll be the Jeff, Adam, and someone else show other than Fish. Can't wait. You all have a great rest of your day. We'll see you tomorrow <laughs> on a Wednesday. Check out Big D Energy at 11 o'clock. See you guys. Bye. More football. Premier League. How do you not?